game five, Toronto's Juan Guzman got it done. So is it hello long winter or home sweet home for the White Sox tonight? Welcome back to Chicago and to New Comiskey Park. Nearly frostbitten tonight, both literally and figuratively, as the Toronto Blue Jays look to put the Chicago White Sox on ice. Up three games to two in this series, the Blue Jays could wrap it up tonight. For the White Sox, to paraphrase a famous North Sider, let's not only play two, let's win two. It's game six of the American League Championship Series, the Toronto Blue Jays versus the Chicago White Sox. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Pat O'Brien is a bit under the weather this evening, so we've given him the rest of the evening off. Welcome to CBS's continuing coverage of the League Championship Series, and we will take you all the way through to the final pitch of the World Series. And welcome also to a cold, crisp October evening here on the south side of Chicago, where the temperatures are cool indeed. The skies are clear, but the temperature right now at 48 degrees, it may get down to the high 30s before the evening is over. The Chicago White Sox failed to win the first two games here of this series. They have failed to win a game in Chicago in the postseason since game one of the 1959 World Series. Standing or staring in their way is Toronto right-hander Dave Stewart. Now, the story tonight, manager Gene Lamont of the Chicago White Sox has shaken up his batting order, benching Bo Jackson and Ron Karkovice, who are both hitless in 24 at-bats. Pat O'Brien talked with Lamont earlier about those changes. Why the lineup changes tonight? Well, I knew I was going to make some changes, Pat. I just, uh, you know, after the game, I actually knew that uh, probably Mike Lavalier would be the catcher tonight. Why? Uh, well, Ron's had a lot of problems. Well, he's, he's struggled in the playoffs, and he's had trouble with Stewart, you know, through the years. So, uh, you know, it's not as though we're putting a, a bad defensive catcher. Mike's an awful good defensive catcher, too. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be in there. Uh, the DH, uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Just thought about it a lot, and uh, I guess probably maybe my gut. And, and what I uh, see, Newsom's going to be a tool. Well, any word from Bell or, or a Bo on this? I haven't heard from anything from him, but uh, at this time of the year, you know, you have to go with what you think's best. And so the stage is set. I'll be back in a moment with Jim Cott and Jim Gray. So you sit back, enjoy the warm home, and have a good time right after these messages from your local station. Sunday on CBS, it's the Eagles and the Giants, then the 49ers and the Cowboys. Bless you. He's a big fan. This is CBS. The Lincoln Mark 8's revolutionary suspension automatically lowers the car at high speeds for better handling and less wind resistance, which raises the bar for everyone else. The Lincoln Mark 8. Drive everything else first. <clears throat> Question one. Who is the number one copier dealer in South Carolina? Need a hint? Question two. Common sense would dictate that you buy your next copier or fax machine from whom? Good guess. In the 1980s, people might have accused us at Continental Insurance of being a little boring. We shied away from junk bonds. We shied away from commercial real estate. Today, after 135 years, we have one of the highest quality portfolios in the insurance industry. Now everyone's trying to be boring. But nobody does it better than us. Continental Insurance. We never let down our guard. Clouds are gone, but it's going to be a cool evening. Details tonight on Night Watch.
Back at Comiskey Park, which continues to fill up what the fans hope will not be the last game of the season. Game six of the American League Championship Series between the Blue Jays and the White Sox. Greg Gumbel joined now by my partner Jim Cott. Tonight's starting pitchers Alex Fernandez for Chicago. Dave Stewart for the Toronto Blue Jays. Fernandez has made it a habit of beating the Blue Jays this season. Stewart has made it a habit of winning big games in the postseason. Seems like we've used this line before. The Toronto Blue Jays acquired fill in the blank to help them win the American League pennant. It started in 1990. They didn't win the pennant that year, but they acquired Bud Black, then Tom Candiotti in 1991. Last year, they signed Jack Morris in the offseason and added David Cohn. They won the World Series. During the offseason, they signed Dave Stewart. Why? Because they hoped that they would be in this position to have him pitch a clinching game. He has been the most successful pitcher in American League Championship Series history. He's won seven games without a loss. On the other hand, young Alex Fernandez, part of the homegrown staff of the White Sox, a look at how successful he has been against the Blue Jays, averaging almost eight innings a start, never allowing more than two runs, has pitched well enough in all five of those games to win. He loves these kind of conditions, even though he's from Florida. Now, we talked prior uh, to now about the changes in the Chicago lineup. Mike Lavalier behind the plate, Warren Newsom, the DH. How does that impact the Chicago lineup? Well, what Gene Lamont is trying to do is get some hitters in the lineup that can make contact. He likes to hit and run, start the runners. Bo Jackson and Ron Karkovice in 24 at-bats so far in this series have had 12 strikeouts, and that has prevented Lamont from sending the runners trying to hit and run, and I think that's what Lavalier and Newsom will add to that lineup tonight. Well, I know you're ready, and I'm ready, and we know the Blue Jays and the White Sox are set to rock and roll from Chicago, starting lineups in the first pitch when we come back to Comiskey Park in just a moment. CBS Sports coverage of Game 6 of the American League Championship Series is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Burger King and its everyday value menu. Have it your way. I love this place. Movie dinner. I love this place. <laughs> it's not a party without the new Burger King Everyday Value Menu. Don't you have any refreshments around here? The Value Menu has tasty flame broiled burgers fixed your way for just 99 cents. What do you want? Almost. Like, can you get with a $1.99 for sandwich combo? No problem. And a Whopper Value Meal for only $2.99 every day. You know who we're doing it for. For me. Check your Burger King Value Menu for their everyday low prices. We all gonna shoot over to Burger King. Burger King. Try the new everyday value menu. Just the jam. Americans have always had a love affair with their cars. Who do you love? Who do you love? Yeah, who do you love? And when it comes to plugs and filters, we guarantee to keep that spark going for a long, long time. more from an aftershave than alcohol burn you gotta try new alcohol free sensitive from old spice with cooling sensates it's proof aftershave doesn't have to hurt to work take the heat out of aftershave man proof try new sensitive from old spice Drixoral is. Actifed isn't. Drixoral is. Tylenol cold isn't. Drixoral is the only cold medicine that relieves the sneezing stuffiness plus the aches and pains of a cold for 12 full hours. Drixoral. Isn't that better? Besides being an educator, Jim Elkins is a collector of antiques and an occasional Montana trout. Having owned a dozen Toyota cars, Jim naturally made the T-100 his first Toyota truck. Your typical big truck owner? No. But then the T-100 is not your typical truck. Observe the Detroit Free Press. The cabin reminds one of the Toyota Camry in equipment and comfort. The Toyota T-100 puts you in a whole new class. Here at Comiskey Park, the Chicago White Sox have taken the field to a thunderous ovation from the home crowd. And here's the starting lineup that Cito Gaston will put on the field tonight. It is no different than the first five games. Ricky Henderson leading off and playing left field. The center fielder is Devon White, hitting third and playing second base, Roberto Alomar. The cleanup hitter is right fielder Joe Carter. At first base, John Olerud. The designated hitter is Paul Molitor. At shortstop, Tony Fernandez. Batting eighth and playing third base is Ed Sprague. 
and behind the plate is catcher Pat Borders. And in the field for the White Sox, the usual alignment in the outfield. Tim Raines is in left. Lance Johnson in center and Ellis Burks over in right field. The infield Robin Ventura plays third with Ozzie Guillen and Joey Cora in the middle of the diamond. Frank Thomas is at first base. And here's the lineup change. Mike Lavalier and his percentage at throwing out base dealers. Just as good as Ron Karkovice. Not as strong an arm, but very accurate. And he'll catch right-hander Alex Fernandez, a fastball pitcher. He loves this weather, even though he's from Florida, because he says the cool weather, it gives me more stamina. I feel like I can throw hard on every pitch, never get tired. Phenomenal year this year and a lot of success against the Blue Jays. We'll tell you about Alex Fernandez and his numbers early on, but we had a chance to talk with Joe Carter of the Toronto Blue Jays. Here's what he said about getting to Alex early on. You know, it's a pressure situation. It's a must win for them. It's not a must win for us. But the good thing is we're coming the road and now we get to hit first. And if we can go out there and win the game in the first inning, that's what we're going to try to do, to set the tempo, you know, make them uh, play with their backs against the wall. And that's what the Blue Jays will have to do. Alex Fernandez has been very stingy in the first innings of games the this season. The best in the American League at holding down the opposition in the early innings. Scoring first has meant something in this series in the first five games so far. And you couple that, Greg, with the fact that Dave Stewart, as great a pitcher as he is, is a little more vulnerable in the early innings. And the White Sox score well in the early innings. So the first third of this ball game figures to favor Chicago, and it's going to be important for them to get on top. Dave Stewart getting his mindset for his half of the first inning. Meanwhile, Ricky Henderson steps in at the plate. Three for 20 in this series, but two out of five in game five on Sunday. And Alex Fernandez starts him off with a breaking ball strike. There is an early answer to whether or not pitchers will have difficulty gripping the ball in cold weather. Fernandez threw a curveball strike. You see those first inning ERA numbers, just four earned runs in the first inning in 33 starts this season. And he runs the count to 0-2. The ball and two strikes. You can see the blowing on the hand. The key to pitching and gripping the ball comfortably in this weather is keep the fingers warm. And there's the pinpoint control of Alex Fernandez with the fastball just off the corner. Count now even to two balls and two strikes. The Toronto Blue Jays hit just 175 as a team against Alex Fernandez during the regular season. Got him swinging. Keep Ricky Henderson off the bases. And rule number one for Alex Fernandez has been challenge big league hitters with my fastball with two strikes. I don't think there's any young pitcher in the American League that gets more hitters out with a fastball with two strikes and good hitters like the Blue Jays have in their lineup. Here's Devon White hitting over 400 in the LCS, 9 for 22. And a breaking ball for a strike again. White has hit safely in each of the games in this series, and now Alex Fernandez is now on top of him 0-2. on him and that's something that you will see if the pitchers are on their games they will force the hitters to swing at ball tight on them tonight and here again what unbelievable control for a young pitcher of his fastball that's the only pitch that you can throw to or all four quadrants of the strike zone and he really can move that pitch around
between first and second. That's a base hit for Devon White. And he has now hit safely in all six of the ALCS games. That's the first hit of the evening. Got it in on the hands, but not quite enough. You could see White almost fight that ball off. Thomas no chance to get it. Cora comes into your picture, and it's out of his reach. And, of course, White always a threat to run, even though he says this is the softest field in the American League, not only out in the outfield, but the pace, base pass. Not that they've done anything to doctor it. It's just a soft field. Mike Lavalier behind the plate tonight in place of Ron Karkovice and Lavalier no slouch throwing out base runners either. He has thrown out 21 of 29 trying to steal on him this season. Ball one. 34 stolen bases for Devon White on the year. But is 0 for 1 in the postseason. saw the numbers on Mike Lavalier. Gene Lamont, who was a coach for the Pirates when Mike was there, said this is the best year he's had on a part-time basis since 1987 when he won the Gold Glove in the National League. Very accurate throwing arm. Breaking ball is in there. One and one. Robbie Alomar started very slowly in this series, but in game five, he was the driving force and the spark plug for the Blue Jays. In fact, he and Ricky Henderson have begun to turn things up a bit. like teammate Jack McDowell. Quick feet, hold runners close, tough to steal against. Double play ball. Ian to Cora, and he is called out at second. Cora dropped the ball, transferring it to his throwing hand. So the fielder's choice leaves Alomar at first with two out. Don't know if they would have doubled up Alomar anyway, but Joey Cora had no chance to do it by catching the ball on the run. He never made a pivot. You see, he just catches the ball and keeps on running over the bag, then loses control of it. And that's why Greg Kosk right on the call saying, yes, he caught it. The out is made at second. Dropped it and making the transition trying to throw. So Alomar is on first with two out now, and here's Joe Carter. Carter, 6 out of 22 in the first five games. Drilled down the left field line. Prior to the game, we're standing at the batting cage talking with Joe Carter. He showed us exactly where on the bat you have to hit it. And he says even then, in this weather, it might hurt a little bit. And talking with hitters around the cage, I said, you're going to see a lot of foul balls pulled out of play tonight because hitters want to get the bat head out on a cold night and keep from getting hit on the hands. Robbie Alomar, perfect 13 out of 13 in stolen base attempts in his LCS career. Ricky Henderson, let me correct that, Alomar has two steals in the World Series. Explored Chicago last year. 
Not one of them, however, was a Lexus engineer. Why? Let's just say they were busy. The 1994 Lexus ES. Improved, revised, refined, embellished. In a word, new. Tonight's ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. Oh, really? If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. He could have had the 60-foot sailboat. The house on the 18th green. But all Ned Crowley ever really wanted was a home on the range. At Dean Whitter, our retirement plans are as individual as the people who dream. We measure success one investor at a time. Hello, boys. How do you like the new backyard? This health care system of ours, rather, chum, is badly broken. What does this all mean to you? What's covered? It has a heart rate. How does it work? We'll offer this package of benefits. How much will it really cost? Dan Rather, Connie Chung, the CBS Evening News, team to cover your world. Welcome back to Chicago, and here's manager Gene Lamont's batting order for the White Sox and a different look to it this evening. The leadoff man is left fielder Tim Raines. Joey Cora hits second and plays second base. Frank Thomas, the first baseman, hitting third. Robin Ventura in the cleanup slot at third base. Ellis Burks is in right field. The designated hitter, Warren Newsom. In center field is Lance Johnson. Mike Lavalier is behind the plate. And the shortstop is Ozzie Guillen. And every inning of every game, you have seen this Toronto alignment. Ricky Henderson in left, Devon White in center, and Joe Carter in right. Around the infield, it's been Ed Sprague, Tony Fernandez is the shortstop, then Roberto Alomar and John Olerud on the right side of the diamond. Pat Borders catches the only changes in that lineup every day. The pitcher, Dave Stewart, the best postseason pitcher in American League Championship Series history. And Timmy Raines steps in to face him. Raines having an outstanding series at the plate, 11 for 23. Dave Stewart goes to work. Ball one. That's outside, 2-0. Oh. Talked about how big he is in the postseason. That's uh, that's about as big as you can get. Tying Catfish Hunter tonight with his tenth start. That's the most in playoff history. Just this one in the left field, and no trouble at all for Ricky Henderson. One out. Here's Joey Cora. Cora, three out of nineteen. Averages out to 158. And well below his 268 average on the year. Call strike one. Pretty good company for Dave Stewart. Catfish would say it's pretty good company for him. Line foul down the left field line, 0 and 2. If he were to win tonight's game, he would be in select company also at Catfish. That would be the fourth series clincher that Stewart would have pitched. Back in game two here in Chicago last Wednesday, Dave Stewart allowed four bases on balls, but walked three in the first inning. Was off to a slow start, but not here. He gets Cora on strikes. The curveball by Fernandez, and now you see the breaking pitch by Dave Stewart. He has an excellent forkball, and that looked like it right there. You could really see the, the non-spin on the pitch. Not a lot of rotation. 
And the fact that the pitchers are throwing those in the strike zone tells you that even though you see the breath coming out there of Joey Cora, the cold weather not affecting the grip. And here's the big hurt and a big swing and a foul at the plate. Ken Kaiser felt the big hurt. <laughs> mask off caught the bottom of it some catchers and umpires you'll see him wear the almost like the tongue of a shoe down below that to keep from getting hit in the throat Steve Yeager of the Dodgers first used it oh one pitches inside you think that feels a little different on a cool night as opposed to a warm summer day a easy job back of the plate one and one the count on Frank Thomas who struck out three times in game five in Toronto on Sunday followed back Speaking of the umpires, Ken Kaiser is working behind home plate tonight. Jim Evans at first, Greg Kosk at second, and John Shulock over at third. Ted Hendry is down the left field line, and Tim Cheetah down the right field line. One two pitch. Stewart keeps it tight, two and two. design if you're going to throw the fastball inside to Frank Thomas you want it way in you want to air on the side of him and not on the plate so let's see where Stewart brings the follow up pitch down and away and it got away from him and the count is now full at three and two this has been Frank Thomas's inning 15 dingers his first trip to the plate in this league championship series, he has reached base 14 times out of the 23 times he's appeared at the plate. Full count pitch. Get hard, straight away center field. Devon White is there, and the White Sox go in order. We've completed one inning of game six. We're scoreless in Chicago. Hunger in the United States is at a record level. The best estimates are that there's 30 million people that are hungry in this country. There are many, many infants and young children who suffer from malnutrition. There's just no excuse for that kind of tragedy. What Share Strength does is we get the resources to communities so that they can feed more people more effectively. It's gonna take a lot to solve in this country. We're grateful for American Express card member support and helping to provide a meal every time they use the card. Now, till December 31st, use the American Express card to help feed millions of people. The charge against hunger is a battle that we can win. Put your heart into it. Be tough. I am not going to pay a lot for this muffler. By George, I think he's got it. Don't be bullied into paying a lot for a muffler. Now more than ever at Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Most car owners praise the quality of their purchases. But only one car line has been ranked best overall in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Lexus. So the question isn't whether you put your car on a pedestal, but how often. And the Lexus LS is thousands less than the leading European competition at your Lexus dealer. Here you go. Try this. It's a new cereal. Ooh, granola. No, it's new. It's Branola. Great, crunchy granola. Bob, it's more than granola. It's Branola. With a B. Like your name. Ah, but that taste, those crunchy golden clusters baked with a touch of honey. And look, raisins. Mm. It's got fiber from Bran. Oh, I get it. Bran granola. Branola. With a B. Like my name. Bob. Bob. New low-fat post granola cereal. Original or with raisins. More than granola. Branola. Tonight, Shock Jock Howard Stern. If anything, I'm a big nitwit. Plus, Late Show Pet Tricks. Watch only in a well-ventilated area. Tonight. The overview of Comiskey Park on the south side of Chicago. And a nice one it is. And that's downstairs. That's head groundskeeper Roger Bossard taking a look at the uh, weather radar. And the good news is there is no precipitation. The bad news is there is no warm front moving in. I'll tell you what, not as cold as everyone thought it would be, though. Down around the batting cage and on that playing field with the light shining down, it is not really a factor right now as we've seen the 
the pitchers control the ball well. Might get that way a little later. Here's John Olerud to lead off the second against Alex Fernandez and high and tight fastball ball one. Not as cold as everyone said, and you were standing here in top coat and gloves. <laughs> we're not moving around. See, those true. guys are active out there. Well, they aren't that active. I think the pitcher's the only one that's active out there. Another but, tight one, 2 0. But when you have the adrenaline flowing through anticipating going to a World Series and you're wrapped up in it, the weather is the last thing on your mind. <laughs> Throwing the ball and hitting it is what's on those players' minds. Olerud, another one inside. Did you feel when you pitched in cold weather you had an advantage? Definitely. If you have, if you can grip the ball and you have a good fastball like Fernandez, hitters' bats are bound to be a little slower. And if you can get that fastball in on the hands or keep it out of the middle of the plate, big advantage. And on four pitches, Olerud is on base. Olerud, no stranger to the base on balls, walked 114 times during the regular season. And that's something new for Alex Fernandez, a base on balls to lead off an inning. He hadn't done that to lead off an inning in his last 12 starts. Here's Paul Molitor. See Alex Fernandez blowing on his hand, and that's something that umpires will allow under conditions such as these. Going to the mouth. Olerud not a threat to run, so Thomas not holding him on, and a swing and a miss from Oliver. Yeah, Frank Thomas wants to get every advantage he can with Paul Molitor in the batter's box, because anything out over the plate, Molitor can shoot into that hole, can go the other way, as well as any hitter in the league. And that got a piece of Molitor, and the Blue Jays have two men on. Unlike Alex Fernandez with the outstanding control, you know he wants to keep Molitor from going to right field, and he nicked him on the hand with that one. Outstanding control of his fastball. A couple get away here in the second inning. And with the Blue Jays lineup, even down at the bottom, dangerous. They've got some guys down there that are productive. And this would be no guaranteed bunt situation here with Tony Fernandez, who can really handle the bat. Ventura will crowd in from third, but they might give Fernandez a pitch or two to try to slap it that way. You see Frank Thomas in on the grass at first. Fernandez squares, puts it down. Fernandez, Alex that is, throws out Tony. With Joey Cora covering. So the sacrifice moves Toronto runners to second and third with one out. Cito Gaston plays it by the book, fundamental baseball, and sacrifices with the left-hand hitter, Tony Fernandez, to get to Ed Spray. That gives the White Sox an option here. Try to make Ed Spray chase something with first base open and go after Pat Borders, who's the number nine hole hitter. As you see Fernandez field that one and make the play. Ed Sprague started the LCS well. Went four for five in game one. He is one out of 13 since. Infield back. Ball one. Yeah, one of the reasons I think Cito may have bunted Fernandez, even though Tony's a left-hand hitter, Sprague, right? Sprague is an outstanding fastball hitter. And Fernandez, according to the charts kept by Larry Heisel, their hitting coach, will challenge you pitch after pitch with that fastball. Playing the percentage, that spray could get a hold of him. One-0 pitch foul back, a ball and a strike. The Chicago White Sox would love to live to see another day. Wilson Alvarez down there at the end is the projected game seven starter tomorrow night. One one. 
turno. Got a base to play with, so chances are they're going to keep it out of the middle of the plate against Sprague. Up and in or down and away. Three and one to Ed Spray. Sox skipper Gene Lamont. Lots of speculation all day yesterday and early today as to what Gene Lamont would do about his designated hitter position. Three one pitch. Ball four and the bases are loaded. is loaded and one out here at Comiskey Park. We're in the top of the second inning. John Olerud, who led off the inning with a walk, is on third. Paul Molitor is at second. And Ed Sprague, who just walked, is on first. And Jackie Brown's going to take a walk to the mound. This type of situation, you may see a lot of this very deliberate approach hitter by hitter. Lose today, of course, the White Sox are out and they want to make sure. Check with Fernandez. Think back now to David Cohn's scouting reports that we've been using during the series, as a lot of American League pitchers would attest to. Pat Borders, very aggressive early in the count. So any kind of fastball on the early part, on the inside part of the plate, he's ready for. And I think that's what Jackie Brown wants to remind Fernandez about. Plus, Gene Lamont is going to make moves a lot earlier in this game and already has veteran Tim Belcher beginning to loosen in the bullpen. So here's Pat Borders. Infield looking for a double play ball. Borders two out of 20 in his career against Alex Fernandez and Fernandez has struck him out five times. Base hit right field. Two runs will score, and the throw into second base is cut off as Sprague tripped rounding second and had to hold there. Two nothing, Blue Jays. Important early runs. The team that has scored first has won every game of this series, and Pat Borders, last year's World Series MVP, First pitch swinging gets Toronto on the board. Almost looked like he went to right field by design with that pitch. The soft turf out there. Ellis Burks has to field it carefully. So it's a 2 nothing game in the top of the order and Ricky Henderson. For ball misses, ball one. Something Alex Fernandez has not done in this inning that he did in the first was get ahead of the hitters on that first pitch. Pat Borders has now hit 19, hit safely in 19 of his last 20 postseason games. That's a call strike. What happens when a pitcher's had the kind of success, Larry Heisel, the Toronto Blue Jays hitting coach, keeping the charts, he's got five games worth of Alex Fernandez in terms of pattern. He said, I don't know if we can hit him, but we have a pretty good idea what pitches he throws in certain situations. One and two now on the foul ball down the right field line. Logical question might be, well, then why doesn't Fernandez change his pattern? Well, when you've had five good games against a team like he has, you say, I'm going my way until they prove that they can hit me. As opposed to Jack McDowell, who started game five, and there was certainly reason enough based on his history against the Blue Jays for him to try and adjust what he was, what he'd been doing. Because he had no success against them. One and two to Henderson, who struck out leading off the game. Slow roller. Ventura will make the play at third and gets the force out there. Chalk it up as a fielder's choice for Henderson, and Sprague is forced to third. Gets him to top a curveball. Ventura, respecting Henderson's speed, takes the force play at third. Ventura gets the force, but not by much. 
Two out now. Runner still at first and second. And here is Devon White. White single back in the first inning for the first Toronto hit of the night. Toronto, two runs, two hits, no errors. The White Sox scoreless and hitless. Showed bunt, took strike two, and disagreed with Ken Kaiser's call. Devo felt he pulled the bat back in time. Kaiser said it was a strike anyway. And Kaiser asked for no help from the base umpire. Boy, sure didn't look like he made any attempt there. Uh -huh. White said, was it on the pitch or the bunt? He said, no, you bunted it. 0-2. Oh, Misses outside of all two strikes. to get a little cooler before the night is over here in Chicago. Two two white fouled off. Good night to be a hot chocolate then. Stuff is set tonight. A couple of guys in this league championship series who have done okay in the postseason. Before Ricky Henderson arrived, it was White and Alomar, the one-two hitters for Toronto, and they've been the best in ALCS history as a one-two combination. Another two-two pitch to Devon White. Inside, and the count is now full, and the runners will be going with this pitch. I think the fact that the Blue Jays have gotten a couple of base hits off Fernandez fastball, he's now pitching a little more carefully with it. Early innings, you seldom see him fall behind hitters as often as he has this inning. Runners go. Ball down the left field line. That'll reach the seats. Fernandez had to work a great deal harder this inning than the first. It is amazing that a young pitcher growing up in Miami pitched his college ball there would love cold weather. You could see him blowing on his hand and trying to get you trying to get enough moisture off your forehead just to be able to, to grip that baseball get kind of a tacky feeling keep it from slipping out. Three and two two out runners go ground ball Cora makes the play and throws him out. The team that scores first has been most successful in this series. The Jays have done that here in the second. They lead it 2-0. How can IBM help you these days? Ask Santa Fe Railway. Our growth is built on meeting customer expectations. IBM helped re-engineer our systems to make it happen. Ask Dixon Ticonderoga. For disaster recovery services, you need to pick someone you can count on. IBM was the obvious choice. Ask Nintendo. IBM helped automate our warehouse. We just shipped a million new games in one weekend. Our most successful launch ever. You want fast results? Talk to us. There's never been a better time to do business with IBM. If you were to take every article, every review, every honor, every award, everything positive people have had to say about the Toyota Camry and put it on a wall, you'd need a very big wall. And now there's the new 1994 Toyota Camry with dual airbags, a new V6, and built in America. Imagine the wall we're going to need for that. Make a wish. Then share it with your Allstate agent, who knows planning makes wishes come true. 
and who can outline a life insurance plan to assure family security and college funding and a comfy retirement are in the stars for you. So make your wish and trust it to your Allstate agent who wants to be your agent for life. You're unbelievable. <laughs> The Blue Jays are champions of the American League East again. You're so unbelievable. A message from Major League Baseball. From behind home plate, here in the new Comiskey Park, we go to the bottom of the second inning. Robin Ventura, Ellis Burks, and Warren Newsom against Dave Stewart, who uh, sat quite a while on the bench in the second inning. Don't think a little effective yet. There's heaters in the dugout. If you're involved in a game like this, you'll sit forever. You'll find a way to keep your mind occupied and body warm. Ventura looks at ball one. One out of four. In game five, a two-run ninth inning homer. That closed the gap to five to three, but the White Sox got no closer and fell behind three games to two in the series. He is four out of 17 in the LCS. That's outside, and Stewart now three and zero. the sixth base on balls Ventura's drawn in this series. This cold weather, how does it affect pitching? Well, here's pitching coach Galen Sisko of the Jays. If your arm's in good shape, there is a, a big effect uh, coming from the weather unless it gets down into the 30 degree uh, between 30 and 40, and then the baseball becomes slick. Uh, you might not get as good a feel, particularly on touch pitches like knuckleballs, uh, fork balls. Jim, do you think it's coincidence that Dave Stewart just threw four balls coming out of the dugout? No, I think we pointed out the start of the game how he tends to have some difficulty in the early going. This is typical for Dave Stewart. He's one of those get them early or you don't get them. Now, he continues to to miss the strike zone with his fourth ball and his curveball. Then what Galen Sisko said would be true. It can affect you on the touch pitches. I don't think it is right now. Through a breaking ball for a strike. One in the dirt bounces away from borders and Ventura down to second. And that will happen to both Stewart and Borders. You see the grip on the fork ball. And Borders gets the body down but can't smother it. It hops away. Enables Ventura to advance to second. moves Ventura to second and Burks follows this one down the right field line and it's now a ball and two strikes. Even though Dave Stewart has not pitched in a great deal of cold weather but you know, we've raved about Alex Fernandez's success we can come up with a staff for everything right and even in games that Stewart has pitched when the temperature is below 50 he's been successful so he can handle it. One two to Burks. Good stop by Borders. Two balls, two strikes. Pat Borders could get very dirty during a baseball game and never slide on the bases. The fifth back of second, Tony Fernandez, and now Robbie Alomar. So that's one out, and there's an example of Dave Stewart getting in on the fists, and, and it works for him. Here's Warren Newsom. Newsom was the Chicago White Sox leading pinch hitter during the season 14 appearances 
in a pinch hitting role. He was a 300 hitter on the season. Foul back on one. You could hear the applause from the crowd. Such a popular player in Chicago, Warren Newsom. And we mentioned Rich Hacker coming back from a serious automobile accident. Warren's wife, Tina, when Warren was optioned down to AAA to break a spring training. Wife Tina and his mother-in-law traveling from Texas to Nashville involved in a serious auto accident. Warren missed the first part of the season. He was home tending to his injured wife and mother-in-law. We're happy to report, and I would imagine Tina's watching tonight from San Diego. She is on the road to recovery, and we're grateful for that. She came out of the accident as Rich Hacker did. One, one pitch. Swing and a miss, one and two. And that number six slot has been a problem for the White Sox, and if they could get half the production from the Blue Jays, they'd be happy. The Blue Jays have Molitor or Alomar in their six hole. Gene Lamont trying to get more production out of his. That miss is just one more note on Tina Newsom. She wants to send her best wishes to the nurses and the staff at Tier Hospital and all of her friends in Houston, Texas. Tina, we're happy to pass those along. Two balls, two strikes. Sharply hit Alomar back on the outfield. Grass to make the play. So Newsom gets good wood on it, but it was right at Robbie Alomar, and there's two out. And on the play, Ventura moves to third. At least Gene Lamont gets the contact he's looking for. Had there been nobody out, Newsom would have had a productive out, but he hit it at one of the best second basemen in all of baseball. Handles it, gets his balance, throws him out easily. So two out, and here is Lance Johnson. Ball one. And Dave Stewart has now gone past. Catfish Hunter. All-time number of innings pitched in LCS series history. One no pitches outside, two no. Like Catfish has figured a lot in our conversation so well, far this evening. Pitched for a lot of championship teams in Oakland, and then good year for the good years for the New York Yankees. First baseman John Olerud, who makes the scoop and makes the play at first, and the White Sox leave a runner on at third. We play two complete. It is two nothing Toronto. Fred's my AT&T sales rep. The country gives me the creeps, but I came out here to tell Jan about AT&T's maximum advantage. <laughs> Everything about it is simple, except running it. Maximum advantage does it work for you? You're automatically enrolled. You get AT&T's best service at our lowest price guaranteed. We'll look at your calling patterns quarterly and make new recommendations. Jan, with our international facts and calling plans for our 800 service, you could be hosting the whole world that you're in. Hi. We're the Raskins. Ah, uh, welcome. Fred really knows my business. I'm sure I could get him up here full time. <laughs> This place. It's the new Burger King everyday value menu with big flame world burgers for only 99 cents. I can't do it myself for 99 cents. Your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices, like the for sandwich combo served hot and fresh for $1.99. Check your Burger King everyday value menu and be sure to try the delicious flame world Whopper combo for $2.99. That's great news for my pocketbook. Value every day. Have it your way. You're going to want to come back every day. This is a line. To some, it is seen as a barrier. To others, it's a point where traditions of the past are abandoned in favor of visions of the future. Introducing the revolutionary new Toyota Supra. It's taken everything sports cars were before and crossed the line. 
Thursday, in the heat of the night, has a hot-headed killer come between Gillespie and his only daughter. What's he done? Well, he killed somebody. An all-new heat of the night. Then, it's Connie Chung and Eye to Eye, followed by a special Top Cops, when a policewoman uncovers the mystery of an abandoned child. What did they do to you? It's all Thursday. CBS Sports coverage of Game 6 of the American League Championship Series is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Compaq Computer Corporation. And by AT&T, we help put your world within reach. Like a diamond in the middle of the night, Comiskey Park, as we go to the top of the third inning. And the Blue Jays will send their three, four, and five hitters to the plate to meet Alex Fernandez, Robbie Alomar, Joe Carter, and John Olerud. Alomar bounced into a fielder's choice in the first inning. Leading off the third. Strike one. Here is David Cohn's scouting report on how you pitch to Roberto Alomar. Robbie Alomar is their money player. A great situational type hitter in that he can go for a hit and run, base hit the other way, or go for the big home run as he did against Dennis Eckersley in the playoffs last year. Probably a better left-handed hitter than right, and the way to go after him left-handed is with fastballs up and in with elevation. That's Alex Fernandez's game. 0-2, oh the count to Alomar. Chopper over the middle, Cora. Back of second, nice play by Joey Cora. For the first out of the inning. Cora's had a nice year for the White Sox, but he does have a little more difficulty going to his right than his left couple errors earlier in the season but he recovers and makes a nice throw there to get Alomar if you're watching at home don't do that players can't keep from doing it by instinct they slide head first you end up with a lot of hand injuries and managers and coaches keep saying run through the base don't slide head first players do it. Joe Carter looks at the ball one talking about Fernandez pitching style and Carter was saying before the game how Fernandez starts you with the fast stuff and then with two strikes on you you think he's going to throw you something breaking ball away and he comes inside with the high fastball again he says tonight he thinks the Blue Jays will be ready for that well, as he struck out Ricky with the two strike fastball it was evidence of his pitching pattern one 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 and two Comiskey Park in Chicago. <laughs> One two pitch. There's a fastball that Carter fouled off. The Blue Jays scored two runs. In the bot in the top of the second inning on the benefit of just one base hit that was Pat Borders single with the bases loaded. Alex Fernandez contributed to it with two bases on balls, and he also hit a batter. And the Jays lead it 2-0. That's high. 2-2. Two two. And the Blue Jays, as usual, getting production out of the lower end of that batting one. 2-2 two -two pitch. And that one knocked Lavalier's mitt. Oh, it knocked the mask off. Mike Lavalle, you're accustomed to being in these types of games. Most baseball fans remember the terrific years he had with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And got a chance to play a champion championship series play. And Carter steps out on Fernandez. Pitch fouled again. Ron Karkovice sitting out for the first time in this series. 0 for 14 in the series. And Gene Lamont wants some more contact out of that lineup, so Lavalier starts tonight. 
Carter again with a foul ball. See him continue to work Carter with fastballs as you referred to Carter looking for the two strike fastball but after you foul a few pitches off then it's a battle of who's going to change Fernandez and Lavalier look out there and say okay he's fouled three straight fastballs off maybe now's the time to go to the curveball. The fastball foul and this one also reaches the seat. So Carter hangs in with the fastball and, and you're right by now looking for it. Happier players in baseball, isn't he? Knock in a hundred runs every year, I'd be happy too. Down the right field line, Thomas looks like he might have room, and he does. Pretty good battle between Fernandez and Carter, and Fernandez wins this one, out number two of the inning. Carter now three out of 29 for his career against Fernandez. I think that's the call of a veteran catcher. Younger catcher might have been very tempted there to say, okay, let's go to the curveball, which is a little easier pitch to hang, especially in this weather. That fastball has been Alex Fernandez's best pitch. Lavalier said, we're going to keep right on going after him with it until he shows us he can pull it. And he did. John Olaru walked on four pitches to lead off the second and looks at one outside here. from your local station. You know the zip code for Beverly Hills. You've been to a place off a street named Melrose. Starting October 27th, there's a new place for L.A. action. Having fun, boys? Head south with L.A.'s wildest detective team. You know, you're a little overdressed for Compton. So are you, Bubba. Yeah, but I look good. Glenn Fry and Aries Spears. Give me a kiss, baby! South of Sunset, October 27th. This is CBS. Okay, kids. I want you to tell me about checking. So, how many checks does your mom or dad write each month? Six thousand or more. Wow. How much do they pay in service charges every month? $3,500 million. You could remind them that American Federal has free checking for everyone. No way. Really? American Federal. Free checking for everyone. Ask about it today. That is a beautiful choice. Lunchtime. Yeah, I'm ready. I can see it now. A Hardy's Frisco sandwich. Sourdough bread. Grilled sourdough. Yeah, it was crispy bacon. Oh, yeah. Tomatoes and Swiss. Oh, yeah. All piled on the delicious taste of grilled chicken. It's Hardy's Frisco grilled chicken sandwich. Tender, whole grilled chicken breast on sourdough bread. And in the morning, enjoy that same great sourdough taste with Hardy's new Frisco breakfast sandwich with sausage. Oh, yeah. Are you ready for some real food? Hardy's. Okay, bud, just hold your finger right there. I'll be right back with the part. At Advance Auto Parts, our in-store inventory of over 15,000 parts is growing every day. And with our special PDQ service, in most cases, we'll get you those hard-to-find parts the same day. So what are you waiting for? Next time you need an auto part in a hurry, go to Advance. Eyewitness News Daybreak with Don Dudley and Tony Dale, weekday mornings at 6. Another beautiful shot from overhead above Comiskey Park from the airship Shamu, representing the SeaWorld Marine Life Parks in Florida, Texas, California, and Ohio, and we're glad to have them back with us this evening. They have had some great, some clear nights in Chicago to take those pictures with. That's called strike one and one. One and one on Mike.
Mike Lavalier. Outside, two and one. Lavalier getting the starting job tonight behind the plate, replacing Ron Karkovice. On the year, Lavalier hit 255, did not hit a home run. Down the third baseline, Sprague chasing and making the catch. We remind you that tomorrow the National League Championship Series resumes. Game six in Philadelphia. The Phillies hosting the Atlanta Braves. If the Toronto Blue Jays win here tonight, starting time tomorrow night is 8 p.m. If Chicago wins, it's a 3 o'clock start. And Greg Maddox will go for the Braves. Tommy Green for the Philadelphia Phillies. Braves going to try to defeat Tommy Green again. He lost the last meeting between those two. That was the first time he had lost a game at Veterans Stadium all year. And Maddox, of course, like Dave Stewart for the Blue Jays, a free agent signing, and he's the guy Bobby Cox would like to have on the mound in situations like this. And then Tommy Glavin in game seven. Ozzie Guillen takes ball one. As a pitcher, does your heart go out to Kurt Schilling the way he has oh, pitched boy. in this series? And that whole ball club in Philadelphia, to battle back and win a game like that on the road was remarkable. 1-0 pitch, Ozzie into right center field. Carter and White, long run. It falls safely. Guillen on his way to second. White with the throw, and Guillen beat it. First Chicago hit of the night. An Ozzie Guillen two base hit. the Toronto bottom third of the order that's been so productive. And Guillen with a big one-out double. Carter reaches as far as he can. And Guillen with a hit first slide in for a double. So the Chicago fans with something to cheer about here in the last of the third will go to the top of the order in Tim Raines. Pretty good throw by Devon White, who was going the other direction when he picked up the ball. And Guillen slid to the right side of the bag. You see him slide over to the inside, so Fernandez had to reach to try to tag it. Here's Tim Raines. That's outside, 1-0. A lot of great shortstops from Venezuela in Major League Baseball history. Louis Aparicio right here in Chicago, but Ozzie Guillen's hero was Davey Concepcion. Played for the Cincinnati Reds, the big red machine, and that's why he wears number 13. It was Concepcion's name. One and one. Another former Major League shortstop from Venezuela as part of the Chicago White Sox broadcast team does Hispanic broadcasts on radio. Chico Carrascal. Guillen takes a look around at second base. 1-1 one, one pitch to Reigns. Base hit left field. Guillen will be held at third as the throw comes in and the White Sox with runners at the corners in one out. And the second straight hit off of Dave Stewart. Tim Raines takes the outside pitch the other way. No chance for Sprague or Fernandez. And even though Ricky Henderson does not possess a strong arm, you can see where he fields this ball. Very, very shallow left field, and Terry Bevington wisely holds up Ozzie Guillen. Guillen had to wait just a couple of counts anyway to make sure the ball went through. And with his 12th hit in this series, Tim Raines sets a new American League Championship Series record. He had shared with five other players the record of 11. Chris Chambliss, Fred Lynn, Robbie Alomar, Harold Baines, and Marty Barron. Gaston in the dugout. Here's Joey Cora, strikeout victim his first time up. Ball one. 
Well, the object here for Chicago is to stay out of the double play. And we've had this situation several times during the series. And I've mentioned the bunt. Haven't seen Cora do it yet, but it's such a logical play with Olerud holding Reigns at first. You just pull a bunt down that way. You advance Reigns to second, get the run home, stay out of the double play, get Frank Thomas to the plate. done nearly as well but they've had almost as many chances Tim Raines one out of two in the stolen base department in the series so far ball three Frank Thomas will be next going to take a look at Terry Bevington whether he gets the take or does it on his own not a bad idea right here just to take another one for Stewart to throw a strike try to get Thomas up there and the count now full three and two talk with Dave Stewart perhaps about Tim Raines running on this pitch probably just the pitch selection or maybe just an idea to watch Raines at first base I would think with three two one out he's going to be off on a ground ball stay out of the double play there goes rain and that hit him and the bases are loaded second hit back in this ball game one for each side and it's time for the big hurt with the bases loaded stuck his elbow almost into the strike zone wow that pitch was close to being a strike does a great job of this and he sure gets a lot of chances with Stewart and Guzman pitching very important here with the bases loaded because Stewart wants to keep that pitch down two and one Frank Thomas named today the Sporting News Major League Baseball Player of the Year that award voted by the players themselves Stewart got that one up and in, and it's two and two. Perfectly placed fastball. And remember the big jam that Stewart pitched out of in game two. White Sox had the bases loaded. Nobody out. And he shut them down. Thomas, no chance to extend his arms on that last pitch, and it's now two ball, two strike count. Did he hold up in time? He did. First base umpire Jim Evans says the count is full at three and two. Tough call for Jim Evans to make down there, but you can see Thomas clearly held up the bat in time. And 
Ken Kaiser talking to the Toronto bench now. Here is one of those moments early in the game. Forces in the run. That base on balls gives Frank Thomas a new LCS record with walks in a series. And a big smile, a smile of frustration by Dave Stewart because he felt he put that pitch right in the spot he wanted. Ken Kaiser saw it differently. Tenth walk of this series for Frank Thomas. He gets an RBI. It's a two to one game. Here's Ventura. Olaru goes to second for one. He beat the relay. Rain scores, and we have a tie game. chance to get two for the Blue Jays. Again, the soft field, the ball doesn't get to Olerud as quickly, and Fernandez has to make an off-balance throw to Stewart. And Stewart keeps the ball in front of him to prevent Cora from scoring, but the White Sox tie it at two. Here's Ellis Burks. Runners at first and third, two out. Ball one. That's Joey Cora at third. Ventura is on at first. White Sox have scored twice here in the third to tie it. Two and oh. Not unlike some of the problems Stewart had early on in game two. Typical for him. Ellis Burks right now in a nice hitting situation. He's seen two fork balls, two and oh. You can bet he will guess fastball here. Let's see if he gets it. And singing out Ellis Burks' name. He did get fastball 2-1. Didn't pull the trigger. Must not have been in an area that he wanted it in. Burks has had a good series at 6 out of 19, but he is also stranded. 16 runners while making the last out of an inning eight times. Face with that situation here. Good swing and a good pitch. It's two and two. statistics we have in baseball there should be one for this there's holds for relief pitchers no category for catchers on saving runs on plays like that and they're just as valuable that kept Cora from scoring the lead run Ventura will be off with the pitch and there he goes that one almost got Joey Cora down the third baseline hey nice pick it's picked up the third baseline by the ball girl Good reaction time. <laughs> she saw Pat Borders play it the same way. Keep the ball in front of you. 
Stewart, 29 pitches over the first two innings. This will be his 30th. In this inning. There goes Ventura. Down the third baseline, Sprague will go across the diamond. And that'll do it for the White Sox here in the third inning, but they come up with two. And after two, three, it's a 2-2 tie. Toyota proudly presents All Around Champions. Jim Abbott is special, not because he overcame his own disabilities, but because he coaches disabled youngsters to realize they're just kids. By playing ball with them, they learn to set goals, accomplish deeds, and have fun along the way. In return, their smiles are what make Jim Abbott feel truly special. Toyota is pleased to support Jim by donating $1,000 to Challenger Division Baseball. No matter how far the journey, the need to make it home is basic. Instinctual. Toyota 4Runner. For the way there, for the way back. What do you mean I can't do that? <laughs> Please, don't pull that on me now. I'm pressing enter. You're the computer. You tell me where the file is. Huh? Don't just sit there blinking. Enter. I'm gonna give this to you, but I want it back. The idea of talking to a computer is certainly not a new one. Open status report. Getting a response certainly is. The new Desk Pro with Business Audio from Compaq. For his retirement, Neil McBain had no intention of slowing down. That's why Dean Witter mapped out his financial course with only one goal in mind. Victory. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. Double header. I'm hungry. That goes double for me. McDonald's? I'm not double. Thanks to McDonald's double plays, you can get two double cheeseburgers for $2 or two triple cheeseburgers for $3. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. This game summary is sponsored by Bud Light. Welcome back to Chicago, where the Blue Jays took a two-run lead in the top of the second inning on a Pat Borders base hit. The White Sox responded with two in the last of the third. Frank Thomas setting a league championship series record with his 10th base on balls of the series. It came with the bases loaded. He got an RBI out of it. We'll go to the fourth inning with the score tied at two. Paul Molitor, Tony Fernandez, Ed Sprague to face Alex Fernandez, who's been on the bench for a while. Molitor hit by a Fernandez pitch back in the second inning. Misses with the breaking ball. Ball one. Down the right field line. Burks will give chase, but it reaches the seats. One and one. You mentioned Alex Fernandez spent a lot of time on the bench. And what pitchers used to do before all the modern equipment came along you just get two hot water bottles put towels around and keep your hand between them now there's the insulated gloves and there's heat in the dugout so pitchers really have a way to to stay warm while they're in there you can go back into the clubhouse sure one one pitches follow back it's one and two but you see the constant blowing on the hand it's almost like when you're reading a book and your fingers get dry, you want to turn the page. Pitchers do the same thing. They want a little moisture to get just that tacky enough feeling to keep the ball from slipping out. One, two to Molitor. Down the line. Ventura tries backhanding it. Can he get him? No. Ventura didn't pick it up cleanly on the first try, and it took him too long to recover, and that's an error. Uncharacteristic of Robin Ventura. He thought this ball was going to be well to his backhand side, but he overran it. It hopped back toward him. 
he could have fielded that ball the conventional way, palms up, and then by the time he recovers, Molitor has too much speed and he beats the throw. Some of the ways you keep warm in the Toronto dugout. Molitor on first with the error, and here's Tony Fernandez, who sacrificed runners up to second and third back in the second inning. This one is out of play down the third baseline. Back in the second inning, Pat Borders came through with a bases loaded single to right to get two runners home for the Blue Jays. In the third inning, Frank Thomas walked with the bases loaded to get the first Chicago run over. And then Tim Raines scored on the Robin Ventura fielder's choice. That's how we stand here in the top of the fourth. One pitches down and in. It's one more down. Long look at Nick Leva. Fernandez throws a lot of fastballs. Fernandez would be a very logical hit and run candidate to make contact. Quick throw to first. No. Says Jim Evans. Molitor almost looked like he was inching towards second and I'll tell you you got to make sure with big Frank Thomas's feet that you get your hand on the bag he blocks you off there I don't think he reached it <laughs> he still hasn't reached it one one pitches high two and one that's the first thing Frank Thomas learned playing first base Man, you got to go over that big foot too long around it Hit and run percentage goes up even more now with a 2 1 count. Fernandez, Alex, that is, has to throw a strike. There he goes. Hit in the air, left center field. Molitor will pull up. Johnson, playing that swirling wind in the outfield, comes back and makes the catch. Made reference to it our first two games here in Comiskey Park the winds here in Comiskey Park can be very tricky indeed and this is Lance Johnson's home park and you can even see he has to change his route no matter what way the flags are blowing outfielders will tell you they look up and says yes it looks like the ball will be carrying to right not so it'll change inning to inning continually swirling yeah like that like that Lance here's uh, Ed Sprague with one on and one out Jays have scored 22 runs in this series so far, and the fourth inning has been the most prolific for them. They've scored five times in the combined fourth innings of the first five games. Fernandez misses low, ball one. Along with Jim Cott and Jim Gray, I'm Greg Gumbel. The new Comiskey Park on the south side of Chicago. Game six of the American League Championship Series. We are tied at two. With one on and one out here in the top of the fourth inning. It's Sprague, the hitter, Pat Borders, due up next. Big swing and a miss. Sunday in Toronto. In Toronto is the key word. Faster turf, faster track, a little tougher to get a jump here. Brown ball, base hit right field. Molitor makes the turn at second. He'll go to third without a throw. And the Jays now with runners at first and third and one out. Third hit of the game for Toronto. 
Now you can see why Gene Lamont changed his lineup to put Newsom and Lavalier in that can make contact. Because even though Sprague didn't hit that ball sharply, Cora cheating toward second base for the double play can't get to it. So just making contact gets Molitor th to third. And here's Borders, who had the two-run single back in the second inning. First pitch swinging fouled back. That brought a quick visit from Gene Lamont. Remember Pat Borders in the second inning with the bases loaded, one out. First pitch swinging. And Lavalier and Fernandez been going at him with fastballs early into count. You might say, hey, I know you got a good fastball, but this guy's been right on it. Maybe we ought to put a wrinkle in one, throw him a little curveball early in the count. Borders like the good dad he is. <laughs> he takes his kids with him wherever he goes. Scribbled their names on his batting glove. As much as he pops around behind the plate, I'd be surprised if that's readable by the end of the game. 0 and 1 to count. across in the form of Paul Molitor and Toronto regains the lead 3-2. Well, the weakest part of the Chicago defense even though it's been improved this year the high bounding ball Gian gets it to Cora in plenty of time but the throw is in the dirt and Thomas you can see Frank even at 6-5 didn't reach for that ball watch how the ball gets in on him. See, without reaching for it, that ball hits the dirt. He doesn't get a chance to get the glove out in front, get any leather on it to block it. Second error of the inning, the third of the series for Joey Cora. And the Blue Jays have a 3-2 to two lead. Here's Ricky Henderson. On the error, Borders goes down to second. Take a look at Frank Thomas. See where the glove is right here, and it should be somewhere out in there. So he could reach for it and might have been able to scoop it. He let the ball get in on him too much. That's called strike one and one now to Henderson. This inning began with Paul Molitor reaching on an error by Ventura at third. Fernandez flied out to center, Sprague singled. And then Borders reached on the fielder's choice, moved up on the error by Joey Cora. A weak spot for the White Sox. I'd say most most first basemen in the major leagues make that play. At least, uh, oh, Molitor would have would have scored the run anyway, but to give himself a chance to scoop it. I mean, if he bobbles it, Molitor still scores, but to give himself a chance to scoop it, he had to have the glove out front. One and two on Henderson. Two and two. And as you said, had he done that, the inning would have been over. I think the White Sox have some changes in mind for that position next year and talking to general manager Ron Schuler. That would entail making Frank Thomas a full-time DH. 
Well, the, the lineup the White Sox put up there and all the controversy even during this series about who's going to be the DH, their lineup screams for a left-hand hitter with some power. And talking with Ron Schuler, the White Sox GM before the game, he wouldn't commit any names, but he said, I, I'll have that problem solved next year. And I have a feeling that it's going to be Thomas going back to being a DH and maybe a left-hand hitting first baseman either from their organization, but uh, Schuler recognizes, I think, the need for that on this ball club. Improved defense on the right side and another left-hand hitter in the lineup. You and I talked, there are a number of left-handed hitting first basemen available. Will Clark, Rafael Palmero, the name two. 2-2 two -two pitch. Check swing. Thomas flips to Fernandez. And he barely beat Henderson to the bag. And that retires Toronto in the fourth inning. But not before a couple of errors paved the way for the go-ahead run. Last of the fourth coming. 3-2 Blue Jays. If you want a truck built in the USA and loaded with options, you've got options. If you want sports stripes, chrome... You know what you can do here in Comiskey Park? You can bring your pooch or your kitty or your parrot or your boa constrictor and you can check him in during the game. The game's over. You can go get him. Not much they've left out at New Comiskey Park. Bottom of the fourth, Warren Newsom, Lance Johnson, Mike Laval here to face Dave Stewart, who has the lead again. It's 1-0. That's called strike. Big swing by Newsom, and he's down to the count 0 and 2. More than anything else, Newsom's a contact hitter, and that's what the White Sox have been lacking when they've come up short in critical situations. Hit the ball sharply in his first at bat, but right at Roberto Alomar. Still 0 2. In Toronto, that man, Bo Jackson, was the designated hitter. Hitless in 10 trips to the plate with six strikeouts. One and two. The man that was talked about for possibly DHing tonight, but Gene Lamont just said, no, I, I wouldn't put him in that kind of situation. That was Steve Sachs. He actually has the best batting average against Dave Stewart. Another hard hit ball, and again, right at Alomar. And Newsom is out. Steve Sachs, 10 for 24 against Stewart. But Lamont said he hasn't played. Put him up in this situation wouldn't be fair. And I'll tell you, with all the turmoil within the White Sox DH situation during this series, your hat has to be tipped to Steve Sachs and also to Tim Belcher. A couple of veterans. Sachs has never whimpered about not playing all year or especially in this situation. Tim Belcher acquired, went quietly to the bullpen and said, if this is where I can help this team out, I'll go there. And he's done well. Lance Johnson takes strike one. Steve Sachs, in fact, has not figured very much in the Chicago picture at all this year. Played a little infield, played a little outfield. Johnson fouls it off, and Stewart quickly in charge over two. Sachs saw action in just 57 games. Down and in, one and two. Olerud with the catch for the second out. Although Lamont says that's unfair, you get the feeling Steve Sachs wouldn't mind being put in the lineup. Well, I think if, if he had a chance to play some in September, he wouldn't. I'm sure if he was put in the lineup, he'd welcome the challenge. He's that type of player. 
I can understand a manager not wanting to put that kind of pressure on a player. Newsom has pinch hit all year. Lavalier has caught 29 games since been here, but Steve Sachs hasn't had hasn't seen much action at all lately. Lavalier fouled out to third, leading off the third inning. So he stands in 0 for 1 and follows it back here. Both Dave Stewart and Alex Fernandez up in the 70s in their pitch count tonight. Stewart taking something off and the ball here follows it. It's one and two. On that shot there, Jim, you want to show me where that pitch was on the plate? <laughs> Little number toward third. Sprague charges, picks it up, throws. Nice play, got him easily. White Sox are out in order in the fourth. Four complete here in Chicago. 3-2, Blue Jays. Welcome back, everybody. Fred, final question. Are you ready? I'm ready, Norm. Name the most affordable mid-size sedan with driver and passenger airbag. The breaking ball to start things off with the strike. Has that National League series been unbelievable? I mean, if you projected before the series, the Phillies, Jim Fergosi, the Philly manager, mentioned that they would have won the high-scoring games, and the Braves, the close ones, it's been just the opposite. Little bit off speed, and Devon White follows it off and is behind in the count 0-2. Game time temperature was 48 degrees. It has dropped 2 degrees. Nice hat. Ball misses one and two. Pitchers actually the ones that can keep the warmest because they're active all the time, always moving around. White down the left field line. That one will drift foul and out of reach. There's the old hand warmers. That's all you want. A little feeling in your fingers. Grab that hot water bottle. And Devon White fouls that one at the plate. No, it's a fair ball. It rolled fair. And Devon White says it hit me. Ask the first base up. And it is a foul ball. <laughs> John Schulock, the third base umpire, running in to assist Ken Kaiser. Kaiser said, no, we got it figured. Get back in your dugout. See the ball barely in the batter's box on the right side and then hops back into fair territory nice where it would have been playable, but uh, Shulock spotted the ball hitting in foul territory. Nice try by Michael Lavalier. That's outside now, 2 and 2. White singled in the first, grounded out in the second. There is a base hit to left field past the outstretched glove of Robin Ventura. Second hit of the night for Devon White. And the fourth for the Blue Jays. He is quietly having an outstanding series. And I don't know that it's too quietly. Last couple of championship series from the leadoff spot, now hitting second, and Ventura gets as high as he can. And to lead off an inning with that single white again, even though he has not been successful in postseason play, always a threat to steal. 11 of 24 in the series now for Devon White. There goes Devon White. Ground ball, base hit left field. White makes the turn, will make third easily, and the Blue Jays have things going again here in the fifth inning. Runners at first and third, and nobody out. A 
again, David Cohn's scouting report, great situational hitter. That translates into intelligent hitter. Guillen, as White is on the run, Guillen moves towards second, and watch Robbie Alomar's swing. You can see him look right at the hole between third and short. No chance for Ventura. Guillen was covering the bag. White gets the third easily. Blue Jays look to extend their one-run lead as Tim Belcher starts to throw again on the Chicago bullpen. With Alomar at first and White at third, you have speed on the bases for the Blue Jays. tips it at the plate, strike one. Not since the 1977-78 New York Yankees has a team won back-to-back -back world championships. The Blue Jays are looking to accomplish that. And the first step would be a victory over the White Sox. been caught stealing in the postseason. Perfect 13 out of 13. Good fastball from Fernandez. It's 0-2. Fastball after fastball seems to be the pattern to Joe Carter. Remember that last at-bat where he fouled off about five straight. And they get ahead of him with another one here. And if Carter's assessment of Fernandez is correct, he won't go to the breaking ball outside. He'll look for another fastball. That was close. Pitcher's pitch dropped the arm angle down from about three-quarter. You see Lavalier sitting outside, and it was outside. Two. Got him swinging. Second strikeout for Alex Fernandez. Big out for Fernandez and the White Sox on a perfect pitch. Outside corner, they get Carter reaching. That almost looked like he came with the changeup. You can see how far Joe was out in front of that one out because you give Dave Stewart and the Blue Jays a couple of more runs to work with. They're going to be awfully tough to catch, so getting out of this inning almost mandatory. And another tough stick in the batter's box now in John Olerud. Olerud walked and scored the first run of the night in the second and then fouled out to the catcher to end the third. and follows it back. Straight away in the outfield, and you'll see Guillen shaded a little towards second base. They play all the route. A little to pull. Here's where the advantage of a deep lineup, even if Alomar tries to steal and they go ahead and walk all the route, the left-hand hitter, you have Paul Molitor on deck. Keep getting better. Alomar back to first, and Devon White partway down the line at third before retreating. There goes Alomar. Strike call. The throw down is wide of the bag. White holds at third. Good call, 
You can see Lavalier field the pitch on the out, catch the pitch actually on the outside part of the plate. But the throw lost a little steam, and Guillen had to reach way over for it. Alomar gets in easily. There goes Alomar with his 14th consecutive postseason steal without being caught. That is a new record. Popped it up. Guillen and Ventura both calling. Ventura takes it. Jackie Brown out to talk to Fernandez as Molitor comes to the plate. Another great pitch by Alex Fernandez, and that is why Jackie Brown is going to the mound. They want to get the fastball inside on Olerud, and they do. And not many pitchers can. But because of that out, Paul Molitor in the batter's box. Jackie Brown can tell his pitcher and catcher Mike Lavalier, let's either put Molitor on, go at Tony Fernandez, let's pitch him very carefully throw him some breaking pitches even though Fernandez is would be a left-handed hitter Paul Molitor is a more dangerous hitter Molitor hit by a pitch in the second inning reached on an error in the fourth both teams have left runners in scoring position See that pitch well outside. Paul Molitor would remind me of Al Kaline in my era. And Al Kaline would be a hitter I would not want to face with runners in scoring position like this. And Paul Molitor fits into that same category. Chopped down the third base line. Foul. When there are runners in scoring position. Paul Molitor has come through. And Al Kaline, the Hall of Fame outfielder from the Tigers, could do similar damage. What an outstanding throwing arm he had, too. Runners are at second and third. It's Devon White at third. Out at second is Roberto Alomar. White and Alomar led with singles. Carter struck out. Oru up to third. 1-1 one, one pitch. 2-1. Comiskey Park. Here in Chicago, game six of the American League Championship Series. Toronto looking for the clincher tonight. Three and one. Trying to get him to chase it. You see Lavalier sit outside. And now they'll go ahead and issue the intentional walk to Molitor to load the bases for Tony Fernandez. You see, Tony hasn't done well in his career against Alex. He laid down a sacrifice punt in the second and flied out the center in the fourth. Base is loaded, two out. Fastball is on the inside corner for a strike, and Tony Fernandez doesn't like it at all, and he's telling Kim Kaiser about it. Let's see why Tony Fernandez is talking to Kim Kaiser. Good look. A little bit off the corner, but Kaiser was right leaning over that corner. Had the best look at it. Almost in the same place. This one's a ball, one and one. 
interesting they pound those fastballs in on Fernandez yet you could see Tim Raines and Lance Johnson well over into left center so if Fernandez would happen to get the bat head out there is a big gap in right center. One and two now to Tony Fernandez who is riding an eight game postseason hitting streak. side again and this one followed at the plate. Again the consistent pattern they just keep pounding that fastball. The reason they shift them the other way they figure if Fernandez does hit that ball it's going to be a little blooper out toward left center. Very difficult to pull Alex Fernandez fastball. Now Fernandez changing bats. He has a new one and he's going to probably sent back for a 29 ouncer. He said, hey, I can't get the 33 around. Maybe something a little lighter. A lot lighter. <laughs> Alex Fernandez getting up close to 100 pitches and we're only in the top of the fifth. into short right field Cora out and makes the catch the Jays leave the bases loaded in the top of the fifth we'll go to the bottom of the fifth here in Chicago with Toronto leading it by one hi is this space taken no and then I'll sit down you want a Bud Light? Not yet. Hey, hey, wait a minute! That's my Bud Light! If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. How about a little help here? <clears throat> they say good pitching beats good hitting any day. The Achieve a Special Edition by Oldsmobile. Check out this slow curve. How about a backdoor slider? Here comes one all loaded up. Yeah, and here comes the money pitch. It's your call. This place. It's the new Burger King Everyday Value Menu with Big Flame World Burgers for only 99 cents. I can't do it myself for 99 cents. Your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices. Like the croissant sandwich combo served hot and fresh for $1.99. Check your Burger King Everyday Value Menu and be sure to try the delicious Flame World Whopper Combo for $2.99. That's great news for my pocketbook. Value every day. Have it your way. You're going to want to come back every day. Dean Witter believes every investor's success story is unique. From getting in on the ground floor to getting all the way to the top, Dean Witter can help you make it every step of the way. We measure success one investor at a time. Down below us, Harry Smith, underwater, and Paula Zahn. You live with a man who happens to be your boss. It hasn't been on CBS This Morning. They were nine ball players in need of a coach. What they got was a miracle. Somehow, he was sent to be our coach. They cleaned him up and fixed him up. But will his mysterious past... Am I in trouble being out here with you? Mm -hmm. Keep all their dreams from coming true? Burt Reynolds. You're looking good, some of you. Reba McIntyre, the man from left field, Friday. Back at Comiskey Park, terrific pitching job by Alex Fernandez to escape the top of the fifth inning without damage. Wow, 98 pitches it took him to get through five, but even if Gene Lamont has to go get him, that... 
The Achieve a Special Edition by Oldsmobile. Check out this slow curve. How about a backdoor slider? Here comes one all loaded up. Yeah, and here comes the money pitch. It's your call. place. It's the new Burger King Everyday Value Menu with Big Flame World Burgers for only 99 cents. I can't do it myself for 99 cents. Your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices. Like the for sandwich combo served hot and fresh for $1.99. Check your Burger King Everyday Value Menu and be sure to try the delicious Flame World Whopper Combo for $2.99. That's great news for my pocketbook. Value every day. Have it your way. You're gonna want to come back every day. Dean Witter believes every investor's success story is unique. From getting in on the ground floor to getting all the way to the top, Dean Witter can help you make it every step of the way. We measure success one investor at a time. Down below us, Harry Smith, underwater, and Paula Zahn. You live with the man who happens to be your boss. It hasn't been on CBS This Morning. They were nine ball players in need of a coach. What they got was a miracle. Somehow, he was sent to be our coach. They cleaned him up and fixed him up. But will his mysterious past... Am I in trouble being out here with you? Mm -hmm. Keep all their dreams from coming true? Burt Reynolds. You're looking good, some of you. Reba McIntyre, the man from left field, Friday. Back at Comiskey Park, terrific pitching job by Alex Fernandez to escape the top of the fifth inning without damage. Wow, 98 pitches it took him to get through five, but even if Gene Lamont has to go get him, that was an unbelievable job. I mean, he's young, but he's good. They talk about the young White Sox pitchers. Three perfectly placed pitches in that inning to get him out of a jam. Ozzie Guillen to lead off the bottom of the fifth against Dave Stewart. He doubled back in the third. The start of a two-run third inning for the White Sox. Toronto two in the third, one in the fourth. Chicago make it Toronto two in the second and one in the fourth, and Chicago scored two in the third. How many times would you give up leadoff hits to White and Alomar with runners at the corners and nobody out looking at Carter, Olerud, Molitor, and Fernandez, and they don't score? Sure, Alex would want to tempt that every time out, but as you said, perfect pitches to escape damage. Yeah, and a lot of people say, well, I bet you can't do that again. You know what Alex say? Don't have to, just did it. Inside, two and two now to Ozzie Guillen. White Sox captain and shortstop. He has one of the two hits off Dave Stewart tonight. White Sox got both their hits in the third inning. Tim Raines has the other, a single. Stay in play. Third base side. Sprague into fair territory. Four out number one. Back in game one last Tuesday night here in Chicago, Paul Molitor led the way and the Blue Jays won it seven to three. And then Wednesday afternoon, Stewart went six innings on a yield of one run in the win. In game three, Wilson Alvarez tossed the complete game as the White Sox won and then Lance Johnson a triple and a home run and a career eye four RBIs to pull Chicago even. But Juan Guzman was strong Sunday in game five as the Jays won it five to three and here we are back in Comiskey for game six. Reigns takes ball one. was the hit batsman back in the third. He struck out in the first. Frank Thomas would 
be next. Cora fouled the bunt to a one. That did not look like an attempt for a base hit. It looked like a sacrifice. Yeah, you see Reigns false start to give the Blue Jays the impression he was going. Not as important to steal up at the top of the lineup for the White Sox. They hit and run a great deal, but they just want to get Frank Thomas up there with someone on. That's their goal. Brains 21 out of 28 in the stolen base department during the regular season. Misses one and one. Now one and two. Two two now. <laughs> Neon man is in attendance in case you were worried. We don't step in the puddle. If it rains, he's in big trouble. Two two. Other foul off to the left by Cora. That's significant. Dave Stewart left after 115 pitches. Not quite the power pitcher he was a couple of years ago with Oakland. Lined in the right field. Carter makes the catch. Reigns back to first. Cora with good wood on it, but right at Joe Carter. Joe Carter playing a very shallow right field. That's what enabled him to catch that ball. You can see he isn't far behind second baseman Roberto Alomar. There again, this is why Reigns wouldn't take a chance on stealing. First base not open, and the Blue Jays will have to pitch to Frank Thomas. Thomas fly to center to end the first and walk with the bases loaded to drive in a run in the third. Stewart pretty high in the pitch count for the evening. You wonder how much of an advantage that gives Frank Thomas. Strike one. Guess wrong. You could almost see the expression on his face. He said, man, I thought he was going to throw me a fork ball, and he got with a fly with a fastball right in my zone. Holds off on the pitch that misses outside. That's one and one. with a home run back in Toronto follows it off had a good swing and it's one and two keep going back to what you said at the top of the show Jim that games like this are why the Toronto Blue Jays acquired Dave Stewart he gets a little tougher inning by inning, even though he can't sustain the stuff through nine innings as often as he once did. Got him swinging. They leave one and will return to Comiskey Park after this word from your local station. Wednesdays, this October, after the World Series. He's an L.A. private eye who's just taken on the toughest case of his career. This is Mr. McMahon. He's bailing you out. McMahon! His new partner. Fellas, I just won a million dollars. F on sheen on me. Glenn Fry and Aries Spears. Get the kid, baby. 
take you south of Sunset. Series premiere Wednesday, October 27th. This is CBS. You like the 94 Regal SC? What do you think? Ooh, 3,800 engine, airbag, ABS standard. Don't forget the leather. Remote keyless entry, concert stereo cassette. Cool price. Very cool. The Regal SC, 18,995 with all the candy. So, where are you going tonight? For a ride in a very hot car. Hey, away. Hurry into your Carolina Buick dealers before these babies disappear. Denny's asked America what they wanted for breakfast. I want it fast. But I don't want a donut. I want a real breakfast. A whole nine yards. Omelets, French toast. I love French toast. I want the bacon crispy and the toast to melt my butter. That's the way I like it. Don't make it ahead of time. Cook it fresh or don't cook it at all. They do that at Denny's. 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 America, there's a hot home-cooked breakfast, second to none, and served 24 hours a day, only at Denny's. Is that too much to ask? Amanda Hudson thought it would be impossible to match that special blue her daughter wanted. But then she found out about one and only paint from Lowe's. Found out Lowe's custom match paint computer could match any color. Even her daughter's okay. prized stuffed dolphin. Plus she got Lowe's 15 year guarantee and low prices. And if she ever has to match her color again, she can just bring in her new blue jeans. Lowe's, helping add value to the homes on Raymond Street and your street. Healthcare debate in the upstate. Details on Night Watch. From the airship Shamu, a look at the Chicago skyline. Prettiest in the country. And there is Shamu high atop, high above Comiskey Park as we move to the sixth inning. Toronto three, Chicago two. Sprague, Borders, and Henderson due to face Alex Fernandez. Curve ball for a strike. Back in game two, Fernandez went eight innings through 123 pitches. That's number 100. It's 0 2. What a pleasure to watch a young pitcher like this operate. We talk about all the fastballs he got out of the last inning with. What does he do to Ed Sprague? Drops two hooks in on him. And then a fastball. Back. And out of play. He is one of the rare college pitchers. Alex coming out of Miami, pitching there as a freshman, then went to junior college before he was drafted. But so many college pitchers have the off pitches, the splitter, the curve, the changeup. He's one of the rare ones that has always relied on his fastball, never been hesitant to challenge hitters, and does it on the big league level also. One and two. And as you've mentioned throughout the season, so many young pitchers come in and feel that all they have to do is throw heat and they can get by. Fastball high, two and two. Right hander is Kirk McCaskill, the lefty Scott Radinsky. Sure, the bullpen active before a hitter is retired in this inning is because of the last inning. You work awfully hard to get out of that bases loaded jam, and any sign of trouble, you could bet Gene Lamont will, Lamont will go to that bullpen. It's been a strong part of this team. 2 2 pitch, strike three call on the breaking ball. Third strike out of the night for Fernandez. After the explosive fastball again drops the hook over. See, he's now showing the Blue Jay hitters that he can change his pattern. They know he throws a lot of two strike fastballs. That one was a hook. Here's Pat Porter. Has figured in all the scoring. A bases loaded single in the second inning worth two RBIs then bounced into the fielder's choice and on the Joey Cora throwing error runner scored line drive left center base hit will roll to the wall borders on his way to second with his second hit of the night
don't know that there's been a more productive number nine hitter in postseason play last year's MVP in the World Series and another big hit here one of the few curveballs that Alex Fernandez has left up in the zone. Johnson shags it down and borders with an easy stand up double. And Alex Fernandez looking at another trouble inning now as he moves back to the top of the order and Ricky Henderson. He has handled Ricky tonight. Henderson 0 for 3, including a strikeout. Ball one. Just a 130 batting average in this LCS. Shows you what the White Sox bullpen has done, and a lot of that in the game. When Jason Ray, the young right-hander, started, Tim Belcher came in early. Kirk McCaskill, Scott Radinsky, and Roberto Hernandez all pitched well to help the White Sox win. One-one pitch misses, two and one. White Sox relief pitchers have inherited ten men on base and have stranded all ten. face but it's still early yet top of the sixth inning runner at second for Toronto one out Jays lead it three to two Henderson lines it to left Tim Raines makes the catch not your can of corn out in left field and a pitch that Gene Lamont and pitching coach Jackie Brown will take notice of. Because like the curveball to borders, it was a bit of a hanger. And again, the swirling winds, Reigns has to make a jumping catch. And when you see the curveball hang a couple of times in a row, and you've been through a couple tough innings, as Fernandez says, you say, uh-oh, maybe he's losing just enough. They'll go to that bullpen a little quicker. Here's Devon White who has two of the six hits for the Blue Jays tonight. Singled in the first, singled in the fifth. Not bad guys to have when you go into the postseason, are they? Again, most of those numbers compiled when White and Alomar were the one-two punch for the Blue Jays. Before Ricky Henderson arrived. Robbie will hit next if given a chance. Runner at second, two out. Breaking ball again for the strike. That was the discussion between Lavalier and Fernandez. White had hit a couple of fastballs. They went with a breaking ball. Ball tight, one and one. The woolen White Sox headgear, especially appropriate tonight. Two balls and a strike. Third straight, it's three and one. Tough situation, not really wise to walk Devon White with Roberto Alomar coming up. Not many soft touches in this Toronto lineup, but White has been so successful. Hernandez pitching him like a number three hitter.
big swing on the 3-1 pitch and the count is full. White swinging like a number three hitter. Who is usually your best average hitter and sometimes your most productive again the good fastball right in on the hands. And the fans up and cheering again on the 3 2 pitch with two out. Struck him out. The Jays lead one. Last of the sixth upcoming. Blue Jays looking for the clincher tonight. They lead it 3 2. Ever wonder why a hamburger costs 10 bucks in Tokyo? Or why a cab to the airport there runs about 120? Or why their luxury cars seem so expensive, especially when compared to the Oldsmobile 88 Special Edition? Which, even with air, automatic, cruise, tilt, anti-lock brakes, and dual airbags, costs just $19,995? It's your money. Own the movie that critics found astonishing, extraordinary, and uproariously funny. Ah, go on. Aladdin, relive the adventure Time Magazine called exhilarating, a ravishing thrill ride. How about that? Capture the magic they called glorious family entertainment. Big group hug. And share the film that Siskel and Ebert gave two thumbs up as the latest Disney masterpiece. I'm blushing. It's the hit movie that's been hailed as an instant classic. You'll love Walt Disney's Aladdin on sale now. One of the most innovative real estate companies in America. The leader in individual life insurance. Peace of mind, it comes with every piece of the rock. Hold on. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, overnight the package. Yeah, sure. Overnight it. Might as well overnight it. Overnight this. Overnight this. Overnight. 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 Sometimes overnight is overkill. So kick the habit with priority mail from the Postal Service. It's not overnight, but it's fast delivery, special handling, and two pounds is only $2.90. Good morning. Thanks. When overnight is overdoing it, remember, we deliver for you. Call and we'll start today. The tailhook scandal ended sexual harassment against Navy women, right? Don't bet on it. It may be worse now. I in America investigates tomorrow on the CBS Evening News. Along with Jim Cotton, Jim Gray, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome back to Chicago. Game six of the ALCS will go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Toronto three, Chicago two. And the White Sox will send Ventura, Burks, and Warren Newsom to the mound or to the plate. To face Dave Stewart out on the mound. Ventura, a walk and a fielder's choice, an RBI tonight. Swings at the first pitch, loops it to right field. Joe Carter doesn't have to move much to make the catch. Fans on their feet at the start of the inning, and we've talked about Dave Stewart being an inspirational person, pitcher, and he is. But Alex Fernandez has inspired this crowd and this team tonight. He has given the White Sox a chance to win this game. Many opportunities where a team of the Blue Jays caliber would have cashed in and had a big lead. Would be in the same position as a Kurt Schilling. Might not get the win, but giving his team a chance to win. Blue Jays have stranded eight base runners tonight, five of them in scoring position against Fernandez. Here's Ellis Burks, 0 for 2. Ball one. left field. So the White Sox have the tying run on here in the last of the six with one out and here's Warren Newsom. Talked about why he's in the lineup, right? In the DH spot and in that six hole, because he can make contact. And Lamont 
can advance runners. Here certainly is a perfect chance to do it with one out. Try to get Burks into scoring position. Those are the numbers for Dave Stewart tonight. With John Olerud holding Burks on, the hole is open between first and second for Newsom. He's pretty much of a spray hitter, although he has pulled the ball twice tonight. Newsom and Lavalier inserted in the lineup tonight are a combined 0 for 4. Signs down at third. That one bounces and another good stop behind the plate by Pat Borders. Rod Karkavais on the bench tonight, the best catcher in the American League, but from all the experience he's had in the last couple of years, Jack Morris's fork ball, Juan Guzman's hard slider, and now Stuart Borders. Very good at blocking balls like that. Late swing and a foul ball. We are glad you've joined us for game six of the ALCS here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. Toronto with two in the second and one in the fourth. The White Sox with two in the third. And the Blue Jays looking to clinch. Go to the World Series again with a victory tonight. Strike three called on the outside corner. You read Warren Newsom's lips. His message to Kim Kaiser was, that was outside. And it looked like the change up. Now, I guess that was fastball spin and Borders sitting right on the corner. Frames the pitch well and gets the call. Newsom didn't agree. I was surprised that there was no action at all during that count. No attempt to hit and run. Here's Lance Johnson. Ball one at number six spot continues to be a problem for the White Sox. Hitters in that spot in the LCS now one for 20. Chopper toward Alomar. Makes the easy toss to Olerud at first. And the White Sox are gone in the sixth. Two-thirds of the way there are the Blue Jays. They lead it 3-2. Hey, the Miss Perfect Pageant. Yeah. We're watching hockey. Pageant. Hockey. Let's watch both. Miller Lite presents the Miss Perfect Face-Off. Oh. Okay, by Miss Georgia goes to the corner. She pays the price. Here's the puck coming loose. The gun. She's gone. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, that'll be sashing two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? I want to tell you about my home far away. My mother and father are there. Strengthening the links of communications requires capital. In the last three years, Merrill Lynch raised over $50 billion for communications companies around the globe. We connect investors to opportunities and the people of the world to each other. For them, it makes a difference. The difference is Merrill Lynch. Hi there, I'm uh, Dave Thomas, and I'd like one of those Monterey Ranch chicken sandwiches, please. Hi, I'm Dave Thomas. I'd like a Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. When we stop making our Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich, people tried everything to get one. Well, it's back, so now you can just be yourself. Hi, I'm Dave Thomas. It seems these days folks are taking a new look at their priorities. With that in mind, Chevy brings you the roomiest full-size pickup ever made. So that family can come first and work second. The extended cab from Chevrolet. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Chicago DH Warren Newsom. A short while ago, Jim Gray caught up with Tina Newsom under the stands. One, man, 
go, Jim. We are here with Tina Newsom and their little baby quadri, and this is your first night this year at the ballpark. It's got to be a great feeling for you. Yes, it is. Tell us a little bit about your rehabilitation and your prognosis. I got about three more weeks in rehab and in re injury. And then I go to outpatient. Outpatient. You're doing that in San Diego and then you'll be moving back. Did Warren know he was going to play tonight? No. You've got to be excited about that. Look what happens. You come to the game for the first time and he plays. <laughs> yeah. It was great. A lot of people have sent you cards and letters. Yeah, I think everyone for doing that. All the people here. Well, it's awful great to see you here. Your baby Quadri wants to swing this thing like a bat, just like Warren. <laughs> Congratulations. We're all happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Craig? All right, Jim and baby Quadri doing what many people do, pushing that microphone of Jim Gray's away from them. Nice to see Tina here. The word was she was going to have to stay in San Diego. She was able to make the trip to watch Warren. Robbie Alomar now with a ball and two strikes on him. Tina is uh, facing about a year's worth of speech occupation and physical therapy, but the word is they expect a full recovery, and that is good news indeed. And of course, we talked about that accident earlier in the ball game, going from Texas to Nashville to join husband Warren just at the start of the season, seven months pregnant at the time. Hit in the air, right center field. Lance Johnson, Ellis Burks. Burks calls for the ball and makes the catch. And Warren's mother-in-law, Tina's mother, as well as Tina, now on the road to full recovery. And the baby, as you could see in those shots in the interview with Jim, Jim Gray, very healthy. Tina spent three weeks in a coma and is doing just fine now. Here's Joe Carter. Three hits the ball to straightaway center field. And Lance Johnson has room for the second out. A lot of descriptions come to mind when you think of Alex Fernandez pitching performance. I guess the first one that comes to my mind is gutsy. You know, times when you would look for a young pitcher that has faced this team five times eventually to crack, but he hasn't. Keeps getting the big outs. Fernandez working on a pretty quick inning here. Alomar flied out on a one-two count. Carter hit the first pitch. Olerud holds off, and that evens the count to him at a ball and a strike. Time getting short for Chicago. October and you're trying to get to the World Series. 2-2 to Olerud. Hit sharply in the right field. Base hit. The American League batting champion, John Olerud. Emery got in on his hands during the inning when the Blue Jays threatened. That one not quite in enough. You don't have much margin for error against John Olerud. So quick on the inside fastball. Cora with a nice drive to try to reach it and can get to it. And here is Paul Molitor again. Molitor has had an interesting night at the plate. Hit by a pitch in the second inning. Reached on an error by Ventura in the fourth and walked in the fifth. Intentional. Good fastball. Woo. I'll say 
good fastball. The quick swing of Paul Molitor and watch out Fernandez. Yeah, he's up there 130 pitches, but there's a little adrenaline going. Plenty of heat on that fastball. O2 pitch, fastball, foul tip. Lavalier holds on. Home seventh coming up. 3 2 Jays. Chevy announces a breakthrough. Introducing the 94 Chevy S-Series Extended Cab, so new from the inside out, everything else is history. At the Laporte Vineyards, owners Victor and Beth Laporte knew varietal grapes, but profit sharing and pension plans they knew little about. So they turned to someone who gave their financial needs the same care they accorded their wine. Dean Witter. Where we invest is in the individual. What we invest is our time, our expertise, and our care. So the reports can now not only enjoy success, they can taste it. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. The RCA Home Theater with SRS gives you rich, powerful, theater-like sound. speakers or wires. When there's one in the neighborhood, you'll know it. Drixoral is. Sudafed isn't. Drixoral is. Tavis D isn't. Drixoral is the only cold medicine that relieves the sneezing stuffiness plus the aches and pains of a cold for 12 full hours. Drixoral. Isn't that better? Coast double for me. McDonald's? I'm that double. Thanks to McDonald's, double plays. You can get two double cheeseburgers for two dollars or two triple cheeseburgers for three dollars. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Tonight, Shock Jock Howard Stern. If anything, I'm a big nitwit. Plus, late show pet tricks. Watch only in a well ventilated area. Tonight. CBS Sports coverage of Game 6 of the American League Championship Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich, try one. And by Miller Lite, great taste, less filling. Noise begins to build in the bottom half of the seventh in the top half of the inning. Alex Fernandez being greeted at the dugout by his teammates. Boy, what a job. This is the sixth time he's faced this lineup. He's averaged seven innings to start. They have never scored more than two earned runs against him. One on earned tonight. Jackie Brown said, you've given us everything you could. We're going to the bullpen. Mike Lavalier, Ozzie Guillen, Tim Raines to face Dave Stewart. And Dave Stewart getting the Blue Jays down into Dwayne Ward territory. Most important inning for Dave Stewart in the Blue Jays because you mentioned Dwayne Ward territory. He's not effective when you bring him in in the eighth inning. So he is a ninth inning pitcher. Stewart threw 115 pitches in his last start. Now, years ago, you'd never think about a pitch count with Dave Stewart. Just throw him out there and let him go. But it's a little more difficult at 36 years of age to sustain the stuff. So I would think that Cito Gaston going to monitor this inning a little closer. Two and one to Lavalia. And now the White Sox looking for a base runner who would be the potential tying run. Second time tonight, and the first time since the second inning, the White Sox get their leading run, leadoff runner on base. And Ron Car 
McElvice over to run for Lavalier. Don't gain a lot with Karkovice, but what it does is it doesn't cost Gene Lamont an extra position. He's still going to, in all probability, sacrifice with Ozzie Gian. Figures that Karkovice could get there a little quicker. And he puts the best all-around catcher in the American League, defensive catcher, behind the plate. Ozzie Gian squaring around, drags it up the first baseline. Olerud makes the putout. Sacrifice moves Karkovice down to second. Best team in the American League at doing this. They led the league, and Gian drops it down perfectly. Olerud with the lunge and the tag. The White Sox get the tying run into scoring position. Just grazes him on the hip. Top of the order now, and Tim Raines, who has one of the three Chicago hits tonight. He singled back in the third. Tying run at second for Chicago. And one out. Stopped by Border. Pat Borders gets paid by the Brews. For the fly. the knees on the outside edge. First base is open. Tying run at second. 1-1 one, one count on rain. 1-2. and two. Dave Stewart doesn't have enough fans in Toronto, but he's got an awful lot of extra people pulling for him today. Yesterday was Thanksgiving Day there, and as he is known for his community involvement, he stayed back to pass out Thanksgiving dinners to the needy in Toronto before joining the ball club. Gives an awful lot of his free time. One and two. Followed off. The same thing in 1989 when he was with the Oakland A's for the earthquake victims in the Bay Area. Another one two pitch to Rain. Foul pass first. Stewart is not overpowering anyone at this stage of the game. Reminds me of uh, pitching coach Johnny Sane, who I think was uh, the best for me ever. Gave you more good ideas on what to do as a pitcher than anyone I ever met. A recent article here in Chicago about him said mind over batter. That was how John Sane pitched. Dave Stewart reminds me a little of that. Despite losing a little power, he wills a lot of pitches into the right spot. Soft liner. Doubled up at second is Karkovice, and the Jays are out of the inning. Seven complete in Chicago. Toronto still clings to a one-run lead. Andre and Michelle, two Europeans, are going to tour America and sample the best the new world offers. They'll drive the Buick Park Avenue Ultra, a car with some features they've never seen on European models with a supercharged engine that can quench even a European's thirst for assertive power. They'll see America in the world's most aptly named car.
Ultra from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Hunger in the United States is at a record level. The best estimates are that there's 30 million people that are hungry in this country. There are many, many infants and young children who suffer from malnutrition. There's just no excuse for that kind of tragedy. What Share Our Strength does is we get the resources to communities so that they can feed more people more effectively. It's going to take a lot to solve hunger in this country. We're grateful for American Express card member support and helping to provide a meal every time they use the card. Now, till December 31st, use the American Express card to help feed millions of people. The charge against hunger is a battle that we can win. <laughs> Communication is not crucial to our business. It is our business. I have a pet peeve about people who don't return phone calls. So if you don't hear from me, you can rest assured I'm probably dead. Century 21. Rated best at selling homes. Fred's my AT&T sales rep. The country gives me the creeps. But I came out here to tell Jan about AT&T's maximum advantage. <laughs> Everything about it is simple. Except running it. Maximum advantage doesn't work for you. You're automatically enrolled. You get AT&T's best service at our lowest price guaranteed. We'll look at your calling patterns quarterly and make new recommendations. Jan, with our international fax and calling plans for our 800 service, you can be hosting the whole world that you're in. Hi. We're the Raskins. Ah, uh, welcome. Fred really knows my business. I'm sure I could get him up here full time. This game summary is sponsored by AT&T. Well, I think the inclination was that this would be a low-scoring <laughs> game with the pitchers involved, and it has been that. Uh, it hasn't been a particularly well-played game with two errors on the board for the White Sox, but one of those games where either team can still come out on top. It's really been a beautifully pitched game. I mean, to watch Stewart, who we've seen so often in games like this operated, can't say enough really about Alex Fernandez and, and how this is going to help him. I mean, the White Sox are only going to get better with the young pitchers they have. And, to go out in conditions like this and pitch the way he did, turn it over to Kirk McCaskill, who's done an outstanding job also out of the bullpen. Whole new battery for Chicago. McCaskill, the pitcher, and Ron Karkovice takes over behind the plate. As we go to the eighth inning, McCaskill has appeared in two games in this series, pitched two and a third innings, three hits, struck out three and walked one. Fernandez swings and misses the first pitch. That one bounces in. Count is even at one and one. In the Blue Jays bullpen, it's Danny Cox. Chicago to top of the eighth inning. Two and one. That's line foul down the right field line. Two and two. Dave Stewart looking to extend that perfect career record in the American League Championship Series. He is seven and zero. Oh. Dave Stewart not officially out of this game yet, but we saw the shot of Danny Cox in the bullpen on a cool night like tonight. Cito Gaston, as most managers, will give pitchers a little extra time. So even though Cox is getting ready right now, Cito may not bring him in to start the inning. Cole doesn't bother Danny Cox, no sweatshirt whatsoever. Summertime down there in right center. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Hit in the air, center field, Lance Johnson, plenty of room. Out number one. There's Dave Stewart talking to Cito. The subject, I'm sure, is tenure. Cito, more patient with starting pitchers than most managers. A lot of managers you come in, they'd just say, you've done a nice job, see you later. But 
Cito will usually ask the catcher, ask the pitcher, how do you feel? Maybe give you an extra out or two. Sometimes it costs them, sometimes it doesn't. Sprague hits this one back a second. Joey Cora with the second out. And we'll take this opportunity to remind you that this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Two up and two gone, the top of the eighth inning. Here's Pat Borders. Single and a double. And all three runs batted in for the Blue Jays tonight. One and oh. Forty-five thousand five hundred twenty-seven. Here at Comiskey. Two and oh. You know, Jim, you take into consideration. We've talked about Pat Borders and his production and the way he hits at the bottom of the order. And you throw in all the work that he does behind the plate, controlling Dave Stewart and Juan Guzman, pretty valuable member of this team. Right back to McCaskill for out number three. McCaskill does the job. We'll go to the last of the eighth. One run difference. They say Mozart composed from midnight to 7 a.m. Hemingway was at his best before noon. Edison, inspired by the dark. At Compaq, we understand that ideas aren't governed by a clock. That's why we're standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to answer your computing questions. Galileo, definitely a night person. The 24-hour helpline from Compaq. He packs heavy. She packs light. She wears silk. He wears wool. He's comfortable at 68 degrees. She prefers 72. Good thing they own a Buick Park Avenue with available dual zone climate control. 72 for her, 68 for him. Too bad everything isn't as accommodating as Park Avenue. From Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. You've got to attack. difficult to earn the name Goodrich. All it takes is all you've got. Goodrich, raising the standards of performance on the track and in your GM dealership. Some people get nasal congestion, but if you get sinus congestion, use a sinus spray like Sinex. Only Sinex has a decongestant plus Vicks Vapors, so you can feel your swollen passages open up. For sinus, think Sinex. In Lake Edna, mm. you can get a quarter for $1.99. Come into KFC and enjoy a quarter of the Colonel's Rotisserie Gold. Slow roasted, deep marinated. And now with a cornbread muffin, just $1.99. At KFC, we do chicken right. Last half of the eighth inning upcoming here in Chicago. The Blue Jays lead it 3-2. to two. Back in the fourth inning, the go-ahead run scored on this play. Pat Borders grounding to Ozzie Guillen at short. White Sox going for the double play. It would have ended the inning, but the ball skipped past Frank Thomas. The run scored, and that's the difference in the game as we move to the last of the eighth. Joey Cora, Frank Thomas, Robin Ventura to face Dave Stewart. And Cora tries to bunt his way on, and it's foul. Cora, Thomas, Ventura, a combined 0 for 6 with a couple of walks. And Cora was hit by a pitch back in the third. You can see Cora's intent, try to drop down a bunt, get Frank Thomas up there to represent the lead run. Down the left field line, Henderson toward foul territory and makes the catch in foul territory for out number one. White Sox are down to five outs. Dave Stewart has no complete games this year. Five times he's pitched eight innings, and he had a long discussion with Cito Gaston. You see the deep breaths. And he knows he's extending himself a little in this game. But again, you go back to that the mental toughness that he has in these situations. This is where he doesn't want to make a mistake. Ball one.
Thomas, a walk between a fly out and a strikeout. The last time Dave Stewart pitched a complete game was game five of last year's American League Championship Series against the Blue Jays. Sharply hit, Fernandez can't handle it, and it goes into left field. Thomas will hold at first. That's a base hit for Thomas. Tony Fernandez with a little time to recover. Look at the extension and the top spin on that ball. He had the home run swing but caught the top part of it. You see Fernandez get his body in front of it and catches him on the right hip. Fourth straight inning. The White Sox have been able to put the tying run on base. Here's Robin Ventura. Tim Cheetah made the call right away. After Thomas smokes the ball at Fernandez, and Ventura hooks it just foul, that was all Cito Gaston had to see. The long talk between innings, he said, yeah, he wanted to give Stewart a chance to do it. Looking around to find out from his bullpen crew whether Dwayne Ward or Danny Cox is ready. Does not often bring Ward in in the eighth inning. In fact, the times that he has, Ward has not been effective. But a chance to wrap it all up, I think that's what he's going to do. Cito Gaston just said good job to Dave Stewart who leaves the mound on a yield of two runs and four hits. And the runner on first is his. We'll tell you about the reliever when we come back. I love this place. It's the new Burger King everyday value menu with big flame world burgers for only 99 cents. I can't do it myself for 99 cents. Your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices. Like the Chris Sandwich Combo served hot and fresh for $1.99. Check your Burger King everyday value menu and be sure to try the delicious flame world Whopper Combo for $2.99. That's great news for my pocketbook. Value every day. Have it your way. You're going to want to come back every day. Tire do you trust in the wet? A tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The all-season MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. presents an exciting debut, Pink Plus, a new installation that's silky to the touch. The reason? Pink Plus is our famous pink fiberglass insulation wrapped in smooth pink poly, which also makes it extra easy to install. So get in touch with the premier insulation. For the Pink Plus dealer nearest you, call 1-800-GET-PINK. A carjacker forces a deadly confrontation. I don't think he's a criminal. I will not call it self-defense. You hate guns. I hate the thought of being carjacked. In a season premiere as shocking as today's headlines. You crossed the line. Emmy winner Tom Skerritt and Emmy winner Kathy Baker return in the Emmy-winning Best Dramatic Series. CBS invites you to experience television's best. Ticket Fences, coming Fridays. in Chicago, bottom of the eighth inning, Dwayne Ward has come out of the Toronto bullpen. The American League leader in saves, and you would think, okay, this is a lock. You see those impressive numbers, but Dwayne Ward has come into the game to save it in the eighth inning ten times this year. He's only been successful four. Six have gotten away. All six of his bowling saves, so a bit of a gamble by Cito Gaston bringing him in in the eighth. He's normally just effective as a one-inning pitcher. In Toronto on Sunday, Robin Ventura hit a two-run homer off of Dwayne Ward in the ninth inning. 
to make it a 5-3 game. The White Sox got no closer. 0-1 the count on Ventura. 0-2. What a job Dave Stewart did. No surprise. Inside, one and two. The next hitter would be Ellis Burks. As one of the Chicago hits tonight. White Sox have managed just four hits to this point. Two and two. That hit Sunday, that home run, the only thing that Ventura has collected off of Dwayne Ward to date. He went around and struck him out. So Ventura out on strikes. The good hard slider, you'll be able to see the spin on it. Like Juan Guzman, it goes straight down. And Ventura commits and can't make contact. For Joe Carter's comments at the start of the game, this is a must game for them, not for us, meaning the Blue Jays. I don't know team that wins game six and takes it to game seven wins a high percentage of time and the White Sox would have Wilson Alvarez tomorrow so this is equally a must game for Toronto. Burks looks at ball one. No one has left Comiskey Park. Burks seven hits in 22 at bats in this series. Two and one. Very difficult to get the ball in the air against Dwayne Ward. That home run you mentioned to Robin Ventura, only the fifth. You hope you get something bell tie but you seldom do big cut and a miss and it's even now at two balls and two strikes by Burks. White Sox have left five. They haven't had many chances. Strike three call and the Blue Jays are three outs away from the American League Championship. We'll go to the ninth. Toronto three, Chicago two. Miller genuine draft for us to want a stock car. See it. Hear it. A non-stop trip that leaves you breathless. I got a wife and a little girl, and I will get back to them tonight. 
Action packed. Edge of your seat. Excitement. You better believe it. Judgment Night. Rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Word on the street was they were a bad bet. An American institution, three days shy of extinction. Only one investment firm, Dean Witter, saw past the problems to the real value of the company. And a rumble was heard round Wall Street as the last American motorcycle company came roaring back to life with a listing on the New York Stock Exchange. From Main Street to Wall Street, at Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Someone very special is on that train. That's why you're driving a Buick LeSabre. You love its powerful V6 engine, anti-lock brakes, and steel safety cage body unit. But you bought LeSabre for the dual airbags, one for you and one for that very special person who sits next to you. LeSabre from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. This is how the Chicago 8th ended with Ellis Burks looking at strike three. And in the Toronto dugout, Paul Molitor said just a little bit more. Important out because now Ward works to the bottom third of the Chicago order in the ninth inning. Meanwhile, Kirk McCaskill works to the top of the Toronto batting order. Ricky Henderson check swing foul. Henderson, Devon White, Robbie Alomar here in the top of the ninth inning. The Blue Jays clinging to a one-run lead. And the White Sox staring at the end of the season. One and one. And if you look to the White Sox ninth, the, again, the situation that comes to mind, if the Sox get a base runner, that man, or would it be George Bell? Breaking ball, one and two. Remember, two. Ron Karkovice is due to hit third, and there are no other catchers on the bench, as we remind you that coming up tomorrow, game six of the NLCS. Should Toronto hold on, that will be an 8 p.m. Eastern time start. Should the White Sox rally to win, it will start at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Henderson foul down the right field line. Burks chasing, but won't reach it. With Mike Lavalier already gone, Ron Karkovice in the lineup. Newsom would lead off the ninth, and he's been the White Sox best pinch hitter all year. And I would think right now he'd put himself in that frame of mind, going up in the bottom of the ninth with a chance to lead off. It's almost like going up there to try to get a pinch single, just to get a run around. One two bit. Chopper. McCaskill to Thomas. And now you probably think Gene Lamont wants the left-hander to turn around pinch hitters Devon White and Robbie Alomar. And here comes Scott Radinsky. We'll take a time out here. McCaskill has done his job. We'll return to Comiskey Park in just a moment. I don't know, just uh, overnight the package. Yeah, sure. Overnight it. Might as well overnight it. Overnight this. Overnight that. Overnight. Overnight it. Overnight. Sometimes overnight is overkill. So kick the habit with priority mail from the Postal Service. It's not overnight, but it's fast delivery, special handling, and two pounds is only $2.90. Good morning. Thanks. When overnight is overdoing it, remember, we deliver for you. Call and we'll start today. I promise you'll never be just a number with a lunchbox. A promise to remember that a get well card never paid a hospital bill. A promise you'll have more than a gold watch to remember this by. To help keep their promises, thousands of employers rely on one company. Mass Mutual. We help you keep your promises. Uh, how about that flashlight you got in your hip back there? Uh, that's a pre pretty important piece of equipment to you? Yeah, it is. It's my eyeballs when the rest of the boats shut off. Oh, yeah? What kind of batteries you got in there? Duracell. Yeah, there they are. Any reason for picking Duracell? 
they last longer. And you're sure about that, huh? I'm positive. That's no, no, a piece of old lore that was passed along to you by some ancient tugboat captain? No, that's personal experience. Personal experience only. It's kind of like the old Bermuda Triangle. Duracell. No other battery lasts longer. One of the mysteries of the sea. They were nine ball players from the wrong side of the tracks. Remember, if you don't have a coach and you can't play in the league. What they got was nothing short of a miracle. Somewhere, somehow, you said to be our coach. They cleaned him up and fixed him up. She's a woman, you're a man. Need I say more? But will his mysterious past... Am I in trouble being out here with you tonight? Maybe. Keep all their dreams from coming true. You're not my father. Burt Reynolds. You're looking good, some of you. Reba McIntyre. We're going to win this game for him. The Man from Left Field, Friday. Is Comiskey filled for the last time this season? The bottom of the ninth will determine that. New pitcher on the mound, Scott Radinsky. As you mentioned, the Blue Jay switch hitters not as effective from the right side of the plate. Gene Lamont will bring in hard-throwing Scott Radinsky. The bullpen for the White Sox has been phenomenal during this series. Almost perfect. Devon White takes ball one. White, for example, a 281 hitter left-handed, 254 right-handed. Alomar, to follow him, is even more radically different. Although White hits this one deep to left field, back and gone! Devon White knocks the percentages right out of the ballpark and gives the Blue Jays a two-run lead. That is his first home run in 26 postseason games. Wow. And a huge run for Dwayne Ward and the Blue Jays. No question about his power from that side. And he got a fastball up in the strike zone. And just gives Dwayne Ward a little more margin for error in that bottom of the ninth. Four to two, Blue Jays. Knew it immediately. Here's Robbie Alomar. Ball one. Oh, so much for the numbers game. ball too. Well, you play the percentages. Most left switch hitters are low ball hitters left-handed, high ball right-handed. White is that kind of hitter, and Rudensky gave him a high fastball. And now the count to Alomar, 3-0, with Joe Carter on deck. swing. field line. You mentioned the Blue Jays with an opportunity to defend for the or to win actually back to back for the first time since the Yankees of the late 70s. And if they nail down tonight's game it really is going to set up Cito Gaston's pitching in good shape. This being Tuesday night Guzman would be fresh for game one and Stewart would be available to come back in game two. That went into the Chicago dugout. 
Packers. Same thing's true for the White Sox. Were they to pull this game out in the bottom of the ninth, you can imagine what that would do for them going to game seven with Wilson Alvarez, the pitcher tomorrow night, and Jack McDowell, though not effective against Toronto, would be certainly fresh for game one. Line foul down the left field line. So Alomar drawing things out here at the top of the ninth. Looking ahead to the last of the ninth inning, the White Sox would send Warren Newsom, Lance Johnson, Ron Karkovice, the six, seven, and eight hitters. Lance Johnson, the only one of the three who has reached base in the series. As to pinch hitters on the bench, Ophers. Two again. And another foul ball by Alomar. So instead of playing for one in the bottom of the ninth, the White Sox have to do more, and that makes a difference. And another foul ball by Alomar. That's why that home run was so huge for the Blue Jays and Dwayne Ward because the White Sox though they've not done it a lot during the season are a team that will bunt and hit and run and try to advance the runner into scoring position now they have to sit back hope for a couple hits or a long ball in the air center field Lance Johnson with room that's the second out of the inning Once again, our thanks to Airship Shamu above Comiskey Park, piloted by Alan Judd and Steve Adams out of Orlando, Florida. Thanks for the beautiful shots of scenic Chicago, Illinois. That's a postcard. Has been every night here. Joe Carter. Unless something happens in the last of the ninth, it will be an even longer wait for the White Sox. Base hit left field for Carter. His first hit of the night. And that brings Radinsky up against another left-handed hitter, John Olerud. Which is why Gene Lamont left him in to face Carter. He'd be happy to give Joe Carter a single, just keeping it in the ballpark. He wants Radinsky there to try to get out the left-hand hitter he referred to the long dry spell for White Sox World Championship they might not have to wait as long as people think this is a young club with their pitching staff that should get better remind you that uh, coming up after we wind down here at Comiskey Park and your local late news later tonight on the late show with David Letterman Dave welcomes Howard Stern Roseanne Cash Tricks. Two all pitch. Chopped between first and second. Cora to the pitcher covering and he missed it. Toward the dugout, into the dugout, and he may score. Carter will come around and yes, he will score. And it's a five to two game. Gene Lamont's going to argue it. Ken Kaiser says take up the argument with John Shulock. Well, now Carter's going to take the walk back to third. Now Gene Lamont is going to change pitchers is what he's going to do. He Carter goes back to third. You can see John Shulock say one, two. As the ball thrown from the infield, a sloppy play by Scott Radinsky. Thomas can't get the high throw, and Cora is there. And Radinsky just simply does not hang on to the ball. The ninth inning goes on for Toronto. We'll be back. These days, people who want to save money on lunch are brown bagging it. 
because McDonald's original hamburger is still just 59 cents. Our delicious cheeseburger is 69 cents. And that is no baloney. Now McDonald's always has one extra value meal for $2.99. Might be this one, this one, this one, or to find out which extra value meal is $2.99, go to your local McDonald's. Because if you want to know, you got to go. Come on, no food fights. Smith Barney Shearson, where we stand on the stock market. With stock prices near an all-time high, many analysts consider the market overvalued. We are not among them. We believe the market will go even higher. And we've identified companies we think will lead the way. Companies you may not expect. Talk with us. Smith Barney Shearson. We make money the old-fashioned way. We earn it. People care about the world these days. They just don't want me to put another toxic antifreeze in their car. I mean, who needs toxic? So what if it protects to 70 below? Any antifreeze can do that. Tell me that it's different, safer. Tell me nothing protects better, and it's biodegradable. I mean, what if their dog gets into it? Or their kids? This is serious. It's a changing world. Poison's out. New Sierra. It's not just antifreeze. It's safety freeze. They don't play kick the can like you used to. They don't dress the same way. They learned to read three years before you did. They've never owned a record. So why are you taking pictures of them with the same old film? Try Fuji Color Super G film. Because your pictures should be nostalgic. Your film shouldn't. Top of the ninth inning, two out and two runners on for the Toronto Blue Jays. That's Joe Carter at third. And John Olerud on the error by pitcher Scott Radinsky is out at second. And the throw into the dugout from the infield. So Carter gets the base. He was headed for second plus one. That's why he was sent back to third. And the new pitcher is Roberto Hernandez, the third Chicago pitcher of the inning. Molitor hits it into right center field. This one will bounce against the wall. Two more runs around. Molitor on his way to third with a stand-up triple. And they're beginning to celebrate in the Blue Jays' dugout. Up to make mistakes against and get by with it. And Molitor delivers what would appear to be the final blow. And it's been the right side of the White Sox infield, this whole series that has let them down. Frank Thomas with a chance to scoop a double play ball earlier as Molitor goes all the way to third. Then the Radinsky error with two down. That would have given the White Sox a legitimate shot in the bottom of the ninth. Three Chicago errors tonight have all contributed to Toronto scoring. The White Sox committed two errors in the fourth and one here in the ninth, and it's all sweetness and smiles in the Toronto dugout with a 6-2 lead. Fernandez follows it off and is now down to the count 0-2. Jays can start to look ahead to either Atlanta or Philadelphia. Inside, kind of surprised that Gene Lamont got actually booed when he came off the field, and he's come under some heat all year. But going back to this ball club, Roberto Hernandez establishes himself as an outstanding closer. They have a great young pitching staff. No reason why this team, with a move here or there, and we talked about the DH role, I think Ron Schuler will correct that next year we may well see Frank Thomas back in the DH spot Joey Cora has had a career year at second they have a, a young infielder Ray Durham playing in the Arizona Fall League right now as a top prospect they'll strengthen that position probably Ellis Burks or Tim Raines one of the two would be signed they're both free agents and we showed all this series the draft picks that have made it to the big league Scott Ruffhorn outstanding pitcher Rob Ellis Believe me, this team 
will be back in postseason play again. Still two and two to Tony Fernandez. That DH position, very interesting, too, with the ruckus that George Bell caused with his comments. You would figure George Bell won't be back. The question is whether Bo Jackson will be back or not. A flare for the dramatic. Still, he hit 230. And another foul off the bat of Fernandez. And if this lead holds up for Toronto, it'll be interesting to see whether they go up against Atlanta should the Braves come back because that would pit a very explosive lineup against an outstanding pitching staff though again with the two tough lefties Avery and Glavin Blue Jays not successful or the Phillies who have much better pitching than people give them credit for they got out of the gate this year with Tommy Green Kurt Schilling Danny Jackson when you talk about games and postseason play going back to when he was a member of the Royals to put them back in it as he did for the Phillies so their starting pitching may be short change, but it can be very effective. Fernandez with yet another foul. Dave Stewart saying, hey, I'm a winner. Not yet. Fernandez in no hurry to get this over. Kirk McCaskill was the pitcher when he got Ricky Henderson to tap out pitcher to first. Scott Radinsky came on and gave up the home run to Devon White. Robbie Alomar flied out. Joe Carter singled. Olerud reached on the Radinsky error. And another foul. That shot of Ricky Henderson smiling in the dog. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. He has not performed well during this series. Whether the World Series will see a different Ricky Henderson. He said before the game, no, my hamstring's fine. This cold weather isn't bothering me. But even when he did get on, he has not run much. Only effective bat was the first one against McDowell in game one. Hit into center field. Lance Johnson on the run and made the catch. It's a four-run Toronto lead. Only three outs between the Blue Jays and the American League Championship. Before you buy a new car, consider the comfort. Consider the quiet. Consider the power. Consider the fit and the finish. But most importantly, before you buy a new car, Consider these options. The Chevy S-Series, so new from the inside out. Everything else is history. Tonight on Late Show with David Letterman, Howard Stern, and Roseanne Cash. If you could find it in your hearts to watch tonight, it would mean a great deal to Hillary and myself. Thank you. CBS Sports coverage of Game 6 of the American League Championship Series is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. And by Dean Witter. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Back at Comiskey Park as the Toronto Blue Jays try to close out the Chicago White Sox. It's a 6-2 score and closing out a great Hall of Fame broadcast career. The gentleman on your left there, Ernie Harwell, working if the White Sox lose this, his last baseball game. And what a star-studded career he has had. Hall of Fame broadcaster and Ernie, we will miss you. His producer Bill Severa there on the right. One of the great baseball announcers of all time, Ernie Harlow. Chicago ninth inning. Warren Newsom, Lance 
Johnson, Ron Karkovice due to face Wayne Ward. takes ball one. Ball two. Dave Stewart back in the dugout. Ron Karkovice would be next. White Sox still need a couple of base runners. Wall three. I don't know how long it's been since a Chicago White Sox player hit a postseason home run here in Chicago. Ted Kluzuski in game six of the 1959 World Series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Three and two now to Johnson. Full count pitch. Ball four. There's one of the base runners Chicago needs. with his first at bat tonight. He replaced Mike Lavalier back in the seventh inning. 0 for 14. And you see the strikeouts for Carco. He hit 20 home runs on the season. Ball one. Manager Gene Lamont can't pinch hit for Carco He has no more catchers available. Chicago White Sox, his second baseman Joey Cora. One on, nobody out, 6 3 Toronto, bottom of the ninth. There's a strike, only one.
the right shoulder. While we have a moment, let's tell you that tonight's telecast was produced by Craig Silver and directed by Mike Arnold. Baseball 93 was produced by George Barris, the senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gorn, and the executive in charge of production is Rick Gentile. Two to Karkovic. Strike three call. No, it wasn't strike three called. <laughs> Ken Kaiser pointing, showing it to be an outside pitch. Watch Kaiser's right hand. <laughs> Karko still alive. Two and two to count. That's strike three call. Seventh time in this series, Karkovice has struck out in 15 appearances. And you cannot take a ball third strike when you're down to your last outs in the ALCS. Dave Stewart stands to win his second game in this series. Here's Ozzie Guillen. Showed bunt. Took a strike. Swinging away. Hits it into right field. Carter has plenty of room. And that's the second out. And the season now rests on the shoulders of Tim Raines. for a strike. Three errors oh so costly to the White Sox tonight. Two in the fourth inning. Led to a run. One in the ninth. Opened the door for a few more. And Reigns and the White Sox are down to their last strike. In anticipation bills in the Blue Jays dugout. Sox fans. They have had an outstanding season as champions of the American League West. And the Toronto Blue Jays have been just a little bit better in the LCS. O2 pitch. Hit in the air to right field. Carter has room. And the Blue Jays are going back to the World Series. runs because Warren Newsom's leadoff homer in the bottom of the ninth would have been the tying run. 
since the 77-78 New York Yankees to repeat as world champions. They'll take on the winner of the Atlanta-Philadelphia series. They take the American League Championship Series in six games. Six to three, the final tonight. Jim Cott back in the Toronto clubhouse with some interviews right after this. Dave Thomas really missed Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich with its whole breast filet, Monterey Jack Cheese, and creamy ranch dressing with real bacon on the toasted Kaiser bun. So, he has something to say. It's back. I can take care of myself in the ring, but in my car, I trust Meineke for safe, reliable brake service at a low price. Now more than ever, at Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Owens Corning presents an exciting debut, Pink Plus, a new installation that's silky to the touch. The reason? Pink Plus is our famous pink fiberglass insulation wrapped in smooth pink poly, which also makes it extra easy to install. So get in touch with the premier insulation. For the Pink Plus dealer nearest you, call 1-800-GET-PINK. Andre and Michelle, two Europeans, are going to tour America and sample the best the new world offers. They'll drive the Buick Park Avenue Ultra, a car with some features they've never seen on European models, with a supercharged engine that can quench even a European's thirst for assertive power. They'll see America in the world's most aptly named car, Ultra, from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Finally, there's a TV that proves technology can make our lives easier. A Magnavox TV with a precise color picture, smart windows which preview other channels, and the unique smart sound feature, which ensures your volume will stay at normal levels no matter what comes on. Magnavox is so smart, I didn't even have to show up for this commercial. Commercial, commercial, commercial. How'd I do? Great, great, you were great. The innovative TVs from Magnavox. Smart, very smart. Greg Gumbel back at Comiskey Park in Chicago. When it came right down to it, the White Sox just could not win a game in their home park. Dwayne Ward closed it out, getting Tim Raines to fly out to Joe Carter in right field. And the Blue Jays knew it. Three runs for Toronto in the top of the ninth inning clinched it. Six to three, our final score, and let's go down to the Toronto clubhouse where Jim Cott is standing by. Kitty? Thanks, Greg. Before it gets a little raucous, let me get Bobby Brown, president of the American League, to make a very special presentation to Paul Beeston. Dr. Brown? Paul, congratulations to you and Cito. It was a great year for you. It was a tough series. You played a tough team, but you came out ahead, and that good luck next week. Good. Thank you, Bobby. Chicago did put up a good fight, and congratulations to Cito especially Pat and the scouts and the development people and the fans. Outstanding. Thank you. All right, let me talk to Cito Gaston as Paul Beeston holds on to the trophy here from Dr. Brown. And Cito, again, congratulations. A chance to defend your world title. And specifically in tonight's game, a little talk with Dave Stewart after the seventh inning. That had to be a little tough decision, how long to go with him. Well, that's true. And, of course, Dave, he never wants to leave the game. Uh, he's just uh, a tremendous competitor. And... Uh, Heck, we're real happy. Uh, we play the tough Chicago White Sox ball club. They never quit. As you've seen that last inning, they kept battling us. But uh, I thought it would be a pretty even matchup, and it turned out to be a good six ball game. I think what was impressive about you winning this year is no team has ever turned over that many players. You're like 10. You had to reintroduce everybody in spring training this year. Well, that's true. And, of course, we lost a lot of players that uh, 
played a big part in us winning last year. Everyday players, of course, picking up Paul Molitor along with Dave Stewart. And uh, also, um, we picked up uh, Dick Schofield. And, you know, Tony Fernandez came back over. So we've been real lucky this year. We played some good baseball. Our bullpen hasn't been what we'd like to be, but they held on and gave us a chance. Cito, again, congratulations to you and the Blue Jays. We'll see you in the World Series against either the Braves or the Phillies. Back upstairs to my partner, Greg Gumbel. All right, Jim, congratulations to Cito Gaston and the Toronto Blue Jays. And just a short while ago, the uh, Chicago White Sox trooped back to their clubhouse, and Jim Gray talked with manager Gene Lamont. With Gene Lamont. Gene, defensive problems throughout the series. Was that the difference? Well, no, I don't know. Just that, you know, we uh, just didn't hit real good with men on base, and, uh, you know, they were better than we were this series. Pitching change in the ninth inning. Well, just trying to keep the game close. You know, it didn't work out the other day when I brought uh, Scott in to get... Uh, uh, White and Alamari got him. Uh, I just thought that was the best way to I wanted to switch them around right-handed. Uh, tonight it didn't work. You're going to live all winter with the thought of all the men stranded on base? Well, you're going to think about it, but you know, uh, we didn't want the season to end like this, but uh, you know, we, don't, we won our division. We don't have anything to hang our heads about. Tough both on and off the field during this series. What would you say to the guys? Well, you know, I just went around and thanked everybody. You know, like I said, we don't have any reason to hang our heads and uh, hopefully we'll be back again next year. Will there be a lot of changes? Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, I'm not even thinking about that right now. You know, like I said, uh, tough loss tonight, but uh, you know, I'm proud of everybody. Congratulations on a great season. All right, thank you. Most gracious of you to come in. All right, Jim. Seven errors committed by the Chicago White Sox. Six of them here in Comiskey Park. The celebration continues down in the Toronto clubhouse. They're going back to the World Series, and it's MVP time. Let's head back down to the Toronto clubhouse and Jim Cott. Ah, nothing like a nice shampoo, and I'm here with the Chevrolet most valuable player, the 1993 American League Championship Series. His second one in his career, Dave Stewart, and here to make the presentation on behalf of Chevrolet, the truck division, is Kurt Ritter. Kurt? You got a knack of coming up big in the big games, Dave. On behalf of Chevrolet and all of its dealers across Canada and the United States, I'd like to present you with a 1993 Chevrolet MVP trophy. As well, we'll be donating a, an Astro van in your name to the charity of your choice, and here are the keys. Once again, congratulations and best of luck in the series. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, you no, know, first, I'd like to give all glory to God. And then uh, after that, I, I have to say, you, my, my, my teammates, uh, you know, I could share this with, with each and every last one. Juan Guzman, uh, to me, is just as deserving of this trophy. Uh, Devon White played outstanding. Paul Molitor, uh, you know, Cito did a good job of managing us. And, you know, I know there are a lot of people that were second-guessing how we set the rotation up, but you know, Cito had a plan. Things worked out. I just feel real fortunate to be in this situation. You know, you gave thanks to a lot of people, and no, nothing strange to you to do that, because yesterday was Thanksgiving Day in Canada, and you helped out a lot of needy people there by staying back, and that's always been the Dave Stewart spirit. And I think the pitching spirit we saw tonight was in inning number eight. You extended yourself a little bit and, and got a big out, but you, these were no easy games. You had to pitch out of a lot of jams in both games to end tonight. A tough ball club. I knew they were a scrappy club. Uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Alice Fernandez. Uh, he pitched two outstanding ball games. Uh, you know, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. Be very proud of what he was able to accomplish in this. But a tough ball club. Uh, you know, they keep scrapping. They keep coming at you. Keep coming at you. Keep coming at you. And, and I just kept trying to figure out ways to get them out. One key moment in tonight's game that might stand out as a key out that you said, wow, I had to have that one. Uh, Probably... 15 or 20 of them. There were a lot of them. Uh, I can't think of one particular. To me, all the outs were important because the game was close. It's a close ball game. I was just trying to get as many as I could. If I have to go back to one, it was getting Ellis Burks out uh, when they had a chance to go ahead with a man on third, two outs in the uh, third or fourth inning. Dave, again, congratulations. Your second most valuable player award. Good luck in the World Series. We'll see you there. Let's go upstairs to Greg Gumbel. All right, Kitty, Dave Stewart, not bad for a guy who started the season on the 15-day DL. He's now 8-0 in LCS history. We'll be back to wrap things up from Chicago in just a moment. I love this place. 
It's the new Burger King Everyday Value Menu with Big Flame World Burgers for only 99 cents. I can't do it myself for 99 cents. Your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices, like the croissant sandwich combo served hot and fresh for $1.99. Check your Burger King Everyday Value Menu and be sure to try the delicious Flame World Whopper Combo for $2.99. That's great news for my pocketbook. Value every day. Have it your way. You're going to want to come back every day. Amanda Hudson thought it would be impossible to match that special blue her daughter wanted. But then she found out about one and only paint from Lowe's. Found out Lowe's custom match paint computer could match any color. Even her daughter's okay. prized stuffed dolphin. Plus, she got Lowe's 15-year guarantee and low prices. And if she ever has to match her color again, she can just bring in her new blue jeans. Lowe's, helping add value to the homes on Raymond Street and your street. There may be something you're not seeing here, because the first sign of breast cancer isn't easy for you to spot. That's why a yearly mammogram is a must, especially if you're over 50. Doctors say the older you get, the higher the risk of breast cancer. But early detection increases your chance of successful treatment. While you may not be able to see something this small, a mammogram can. Call the American Cancer Society. Early detection is the best protection. Oh, every time we say goodbye. Goodbyes are never easy, but none are as painful as saying goodbye forever. So please, give blood once more this year. You could help save someone you never want to part with. I wonder why. Sunday on CBS, it's the Eagles and the Giants, then the 49ers and the Cowboys. Bless you. He's a big fan. Back in Chicago, it's been our distinct pleasure to bring you baseball all season long, and especially this American League Championship Series. Our thanks to our stats mavens, Tommy Hurt, as well as Paul Newman here in the booth. For Jim Cott. Pat O'Brien and Jim Gray. I'm Greg Gumbel saying so long from Comiskey Park. Our final score, the Toronto Blue Jays 6, the Chicago White Sox 3. Coming up later, it's The Late Show with David Letterman. And tomorrow, CBS coverage of the NLCS continues with Game 6 in Philadelphia, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We thank you for joining us, everyone. You have been watching Major League Baseball on CBS Sports, home of the biggest games in baseball.